What's going on, Max? I am seeing you. Are you are you tired of seeing me yet? No, not really. Man, we, look, I can't say, but not by saying anything. We need to do something about this mustache, man. I got all cleaned up today. You know, I was feeling a little bit shaggy, you know, but I got my stuff all trimmed up, looking nice and neat. Man, we need to get you trimmed up. Like, we can't have you having these curls on your mustache like this. It's just not possible. No, dude. It's it's the future. I'm I'm um, I'm man of the nature. So that's my jam. These you're getting all Grizzly Adams. Next thing you know, you're going to be like Bear Grylls, like, you dropping in a lot of helicopters and up and hey, you know i don't know like hunting rain you, with your bare hands and all that type <laughs> of stuff i was just like a couple a couple weeks ago we were having beers with our friends and we planned to go go to the forest for a few nights on the summertime so perhaps that'll be actually happening and do what i don't know what do you finish just people doing in the forest just survive drink beer <laughs> uh <laughs> drink chill beer. no survive drink beer chill okay <laughs> cool well i hope that works out for you but you know what we have a podcast to record and we have some things to talk about we have a few questions that people have asked that you gotta answer so you know what we're gonna drop that intro <laughs> Nitro is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this money-grabbing book races. It's hard not to be said. arrogant when you're always right. You know? See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we say, but it's definitely worth a listen. And our pick, can you stop whatever you're doing? Join your host, Leslie the Great, with co host and guests as they get together <laughs> to chat our scene. Hey, after that race that I watched this morning, I have to talk about it. Here we go. 100 bucks right here. $100 throw. Oh no! <laughs> I like this. Yes, indeed, Nitro's the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number one sixty-seven of the No Name RC Podcast. I'm your host. I mean, co-host, host Keenan White, <laughs> aka Left yourself. of the Great. <laughs> yeah, I, I have messed this intro up every time this so far this the last three or four shows. But yes, I am the host Keenan White, aka Lefty the Great, and to my virtual left is. The arrogant one. I don't know if we're gonna call you. We gotta probably get your new nickname. Even though people like that, they call you that. But uh, we got the, the the guy Max Mortimus. He's he's busy in school. Can't even talk to him much now. You know, math's got him all jacked up and all you know all hopped up on Red Bull and trying to do stuff and sleep patterns or where. I don't do caffeine. Really? You don't do tea or anything like that? No, none of it. J just drink water out of your prison water bottle. <laughs> yeah. Beer, yeah beer once in a while you know yeah so max has got this water bottle it's like it looks just like what guys in prison used to have you know it's all <laughs> like brawny looking i'm like max go get a new water bottle man uh anyway guys this Clean. is episode number <laughs> episode number one oh, number 167 uh this is the friday edition of our show uh i think the second show first show of february uh what's the date today well we're as we're recording this is february 3rd uh, but this will be out on February 4th. So today we're going to do our beach RC questions and whatnot. And um, we have a guest this week, and that is Chris Nelson. He's coming on to talk about TNR Fuels. He's got a big announcement as well to make. And um, yeah, so we got a few questions to answer. But before we do that, Max, you know, I got to say some thank yous. I'd like to say thank you to all of the NNRC squad around the world. We can't do it without you guys. Swag has been ordered. Decals have been ordered. I'll have them at DNC. Plane ticket has been bought for DNC, so happy about that. They need some water. 
Oh, man. I don't know what happened there. Dry it out. So we got all that comment, and we'll have it at DNC. So we'll have that for sale at DNC. And uh, if you have some friends that are coming, the DNC and you win some of that swag, let us know, and uh, we'll get that sent them with them. And hopefully we sell out, or hopefully we don't. If we don't, we put that up in a shop, and you can buy there eventually. Uh, shout out to the patrons of the of the No Name RC podcast. I've been getting a little bit more busy on the Patreon, maybe doing you know some posts and getting more insights in there. Uh, I greatly appreciate you guys' support. We can't do it without you. If you wish to be a patron of the podcast, you can. The link is in the written description of this podcast, and we greatly appreciate all your help. Shout out to the awesome companies that decided to support the NNRC this year. We greatly appreciate their support. If you guys want to show them some love, it helps show us some love. Uh, we have some affiliate links. Uh, we have some coupon codes for you to save money, affiliate links where we got a little slice. So check them out. Our main sponsor and title sponsor for the year is invisiblespeed.net. Uh, check them out. The online course is super good. Uh, I'm actually coping to get in a meeting later on. i uh, supposed to have a meeting, uh, Invisible Speed meeting, as after I finish recording this. And uh, check it out. TNR Fuels, he's uh, also our guest today. Uh, they got some big things in the mix. High Tech RC, thank you to, for all that help. Beach RC, Techno RC, Mayako, uh, the runner folks out there, you know. Right, he's getting ready for, for DNC. We're going to talk a little bit about that, though, Max. We'll, hold on, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, TZO, Lugs Racing Tires, Clinic RC, Racecraft USA, G Spec. Thank you to G Spec for coming on. JTP, I'm liking watching, following Tebo, Tebs, as we call him. He, sh he showed how he packs his bags the other day, all in uh, fast motion, do some push ups in between. Uh, shout out to him. Papa Willie's Traction Tonic. And um, yeah, shout out to RCGP and uh, House of RC. I think signups went smoothly and I think payments are being sent out. I saw people super stoked about getting in and paying for the RCGP entry. I'm looking forward to that. And shout out to our, our friends of the podcast, The Viking. Uh, he's out there in the dirt. Uh, shout out to The Doctor. He's at the Snowbirds. He TQ 12th scale first round of practice. Congratulations to him. And uh, that's his race. He's won that so many times. I hope he wins it this year. Shout out to my good buddy, RC Kevin. And just shout out to everybody that supports the pod. So, Max, uh, what's up, dude? I'm good. I've been, this week has been, apart from like the usual Monday maths, uh, I've been sort of taking it easy, sort of chilling. Oh, okay. So, yeah. You've been ignoring me then. That's what it's been. I thought you'd just been busy, but oh, really, you've just last, been ignoring uh, me. Like, last, uh, like yesterday, pretty much the whole day, we were drinking with our friends. So uh, kind of busy, but still chilling. <laughs> I so. drink beer sometimes. I just spent all day drinking beer yesterday. <laughs> I drink beer sometimes. All right. Uh, yeah, I've been kind of busy as well. Lots going on. Um, uh, got my tickets and stuff ready for DNC. So I will be at DNC. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Really looking forward to that. I really want to go out to Santa Barbara the weekend before that. And, and hopefully turn some laps on somebody's car. I think I'm going to take my car in pieces out there. Salty Joe said he'll put it together. <laughs> it's probably yeah. easier. Yeah. I'm already taking two bags. Well, I'm two already bags. taking two bags, though. You know what I mean? So I Yeah, gotta, for I, podcast equipment and all that. You got to mm -hmm. get, get stuff with you. Maybe not, though. I might be able to get away with one bag, to be honest, and then put everything in a small little carry-on bag. I did it yeah. coming back here. I actually got away that I'm coming back here from the Nats. I actually got away with a knapsack. Uh one of those small suitcases, like the carry one suitcases with wheels. And then I have like this projector case that I had that ram full of stuff too. I got away with all three of those things. Every flight. I was shocked. Very shocked. Anyway, Max, a uh, few little things I wanted to go over before we get into some RC news, uh, not RC news, some beach RC questions is, uh, I saw that the, the Kinect brothers are going to raise Yokomo for their yeah. 10 scale program. So I was shocked at this because I, me too, because they, they have actually signed for Yokomo, I think three times now they have really? they signed, they signed way back when they were running Gama, then they ran Schumacher for a while. Then when they switched to Mugen, they signed uh, to Yokum, I believe. And then they ran something else, and now they signed again. So I don't know if it's like a back and forth thing, or if they just sort of didn't have a sponsor at times. Then now they're like actually getting into 10 scale. I uh, don't know if it, they're really 
maybe now that it's winter time, maybe I know they're doing ETS this weekend. So I did ask Barkan about this and he said, yeah, you know, we're just doing it for a 10 scale off road. And he goes, we'll race. And of course they have LRP. So they're probably going to be, they got their electronics covered. He said, we'll, he says, yeah. we'll probably do like euros stuff like that. And maybe some bigger races like that, but you know, obviously eight scale is still, still the, the, the first, you know, their bread and butter. But what, what, what's surprising is that, uh, Yokomo is still around because, you know, we kind of had them written off, uh, but they have yeah. released new cars. They, they just signed these guys. I mean, Mayfield's still on the team, getting the paycheck from them. Uh, Lee, That's, Lee Martin is still running the yeah. cars. He just raced at EOS, you know, so they're still here. I mean. Yeah, that's that's what because last like the end of the year we were sort of guessing Lee Martin would be out. Mayfield looked like he was gonna be out. Uh, all, like all all of all, all of these guys looked like they weren't really gonna continue with ten scale, mm -hmm. or if they were gonna continue with ten scale, it's not gonna be Yokomo. So that's something I was a bit weirded out when, like, I was looking at Lee Martin's post from EOS, and he said I had like calls with Mayfield about setup and. And uh, then you see, like, there's this guy, Frederick Hogwart. I think he still runs Giacomo. He's been very fast in in Europe. And uh, I think a uh, few Asian guys went to ETS uh, a few months ago um, from Giacomo. Uh, yeah. Same thing now with... Uh, Nicholas Lee. Like Hogwart. Like yeah, Nicholas Lee. Yeah, he, him. And I think I'm not actually sure about this, but I think Yannick Prumper still runs Giacomo. And he's a very fast guy. Um, so I think there was at least he, 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 he I, th I think it was him who was the only Yokomo in the main last time around. So clearly they're still putting somewhat effort into it. But like their number one guy in the touring, Ronald Welker, is gone. And in offer, this have slowed down because Mayfield and Lee haven't been that competitive. Obviously, it's Lee got a podium. So he's been, he's still fine. But mm -hmm. I think Lee has sort of switched slowly towards more eight skill because previously it was just like, 10 scale only now it's more sort of balanced i think and mayfield also like he, he's had b main so not so good results in 10 scale so maybe it's just that these guys just haven't like had that good years with in, with 10 scale and now they're getting back into it so it could be something like that yeah it could be just something like that um but yeah they still got a racing program so just doesn't yeah. seem like they're got maybe in um, in Europe it's a little different in America I guess there's still some some guys racing racing them I think like JP Richards still races for him and um yeah. I think like Yoshi Harley and those guys maybe I don't know uh but yeah oh, he thought they were gone but they're still here uh yeah. something else caught my eye oh man it wasn't the tip of my tongue too oh yes yes uh so continuing on with x-ray signing lots of regionally fast oh, guys yeah. They signed Brian Ball. So this is this meme was so funny. So you had the like if my worlds, Spain, like X ray, uh, and then X ray, like the announcement where they announced Brian Baldo yesterday with the X ray thing. You know how X ray does their thing. And yeah. um, then the guy, like that meme with the I can't, he's an actor, uh, black. Oh, actor. yeah. The, and he the... is pointing to his head, like, mm hmm, like, yeah. <laughs> and man, I, I, that meme made me laugh so hard. That was genius. That was a genius meme, whoever made that. And um, if people don't remember, the, like, so Brian Baldo, the Baldo brothers actually are the owners of Renovon, the track where the worlds yeah. will be. So just like people were making fun about when X ray, uh, you know, had the worlds at their place back in 2019. But uh, like they're signing up a lot of these fast cars, oh, yeah. like they, you know. So and ooh, that's what I. Ooh, I'm so glad. Ooh, 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 hot off the press. So I got a message yesterday from the Snowbirds, and this wasn't from the doctor. This was from somebody that's there, and they said that Coelho will be at DNC. Ooh, that's yeah. interesting. That is ooh. interesting. Yes. Wow. So, so X-ray is going full in because I saw Martin Bayer at the uh, Montpellier yes. warm up. Yes. Uh, Max Götzl also was there and they had a sort of a team with Teskione and these guys. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking X-ray is just going all out on touring and eight scale this year because yep. it's the world this year. Yep. And, yep. Uh, they probably yeah. saved a lot of money during um, COVID, COVID as well, not yeah. sending people. 
But yeah. now you can see like they're signing teams, like the active um signing, the actively signing people in America too. So they're growing and like they're putting a lot of money and it looks like effort into growing their market in America. And yeah. so but anyway, the Baldos is a good signing for them. And then like the guys that we saw in Portugal, all are, like Montero are good and and whatnot, but it's yeah, so funny. Yeah, Skidmo, Pelecums, yes. uh, yeah. like these these guys ain't no slouch. Like these guys are all crazy fast, have had their ups in their career, and definitely like the X-ray team is definitely one of the like the deepest that it's been in a long time because it it mm-hmm. used to be it was Bayer, they had Coelho, Wolanke was there at the time, so they had a few very fast top guys, but mm-hmm. then then sort of after these guys they had almost nothing like it, yep. it was just they would they had no sort of these middle level guys which s work was a great example of having all of them like they had all of them at one point so now it's sort of more balanced uh the balance has shifted towards x-ray having a lot of these sort of um, mid-range guys i mean these are top guys but these aren't like full pros even though they mm-hmm. probably get some travel help and they can easily make in euros main on a good day so that's something I think X-ray has been missing for a while in eight scale. Mm-hmm. So maybe mm-hmm. that's something that really helps them. And I'd like to see that happen for sure. Uh, I think but, I think they represent some like good things in some ways in the industry at least. They even though some of their innovation is a bit silly, I think they the way they handle business and the way they treat at least the drivers I've heard who run the, run their cars, it has been somewhat good. So yep. I think I think X Ray is a good company to succeed, and they actually they are this URI has been since like the eighties, so they have passion uh, purely for RC. Yeah, they they're hitting it hard, dude. I, I like this, um, and I'm just so excited that that Coelho is probably gonna be like looks like we're gonna have Coelho at DNC. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know how he's gonna do. It's like gonna be a really rough type of track, but. Um, yeah. yeah, I think th- yeah. this is uh, this is gonna be sort of the weakest big race he could go to for him, but I like I wouldn't count him out of like the top five. I mean, I wouldn't pick him for the win or anything, but I, I mean, I'd be surprised. I think if, if he makes he, the main like, at this race, I, honestly, that's all. If he can make the main and, and finish in the top ten, that's good for him. Yeah, anything? I mean that's that's good, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him make a top five. Like because yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. The pure either. speed, the pure speed this guy has is just insane at times. And if if he gets the car dialed, they can get the sort of bump to set up going. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he can be really fast. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, oh, real quick before we go in questions, so like full full everybody is headed to Paris th- this weekend uh so yeah. all the top guys at you know obviously joseph and ronald falco there we've seen the video you know lots of criticism lots of good good points I, all i see is just pure goodness like i can't wait for dnc yeah. that's all yeah, i say about that it's it's some like i we we spoke about it this before we started recording that i sometimes forget how skilled some of these guys are because I, I I critique people a lot and I like watch these races very closely and I see like the mistakes th- these guys make. But when you just see like Ron and Falk out on the track on his own and the car control, the lines he picks, like everything he does, he does so well. So mm-hmm. it's it's like it's good to have a sort of this reminder of how skilled these top drivers actually are. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. I agree with you there. I agree with you, man. I agree with you. Um. Uh, so, like I said, everybody's headed there. Tebow's on his way there. Yeah. Lots is going out there. So this Friday they're having that bit. This is like the last race at uh, the at the, the dirt, and then they close on the ninth. So they got about you know six more days of running there, and then so everybody's headed out there to practice this weekend. It's like a yeah. mini. This is actually like the nerds warm up race. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. This warm up <laughs> race this weekend tonight. This is gonna be like the. This is, you know, you always heard Greg talk about i remember back in the day when we used to be at hemet and we would have club races two weeks up until up and up until the race down like the race i said like, well you got your you got your dream this is like the 1990s yeah. or early 2000s all over again for you greg degani you got to club race it's like every club race was packed i was like well this club race is going to be packed tomorrow yeah and guys yeah. I, the track is going to be packed today i i assure you and tomorrow and this weekend this whole entire weekend so um 
it's going to be good. We're going to get to see uh, the Viking go up against other people. You know, everybody's going to be watching everybody. Oh, but isn't it? This like is what I wanted thing, to be there for. Yeah. One thing that actually I just came up my mind, like I was just watching like Ronnie Falk's Instagram story and seeing him actually wear Mayako hat instead of like HB or Kyosho, like what he's used to. It's actually weird. <laughs> crazy. It's weird. Like I still ain't used to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. So weird. So yeah, and then um, also another thing I wanted to bring up, uh, I Co Ogden is done in Costa Rica with Bobby Moore and a bunch yeah. of other guys for the Tico Tico race in Costa Rica. Uh, Costa Rica is definitely the biggest uh, in Central America. Well, ex besides Mexico, I would say it's the biggest racing group of people in Central America. Uh, I, I really want to get there myself. Bobby's been down there and built tracks for him. They have now have two tracks on there. And uh, I have a friend on there. He's going to be a part of Andreas. He's going to be a part of the NNRC Espanol podcast, which we should be recording soon. And um, yeah, that looked fun too. Like Bobby was waiting for Cole Ogden and, uh, at the airport and he had like a sign up. And I, I think it said like people's champ. I don't know. But good, good. I don't know. Uh, I guess... I guess this is good for HB and for Cole. I think he should, you know, I don't know. He should be out there racing. But then Cole's done a lot of practice at the dirt as well. So, yeah, you mean, know what I mean? I don't, I don't I think, think he... I don't think... Yeah, I think it's fine for Cole. I think it's yeah. good for him to sort of build his image outside of yes. America as well. And I think, I think, I'm not sure, but I'm imagining like the Costa Rica distributor paid for him to go there. Yes, yes, So I yes. think this is good for RC in general in Costa mm -hmm. Rica. And that's something I think is great. Like having that, because some of these countries that don't have the sort of the pro level racers or don't have the representation outside, like it's, it's good to have that sort of people come over because it gets the locals excited too. Yeah. So I agree with you. It, it these guys love rc just as much as us i mean that's why i want to yeah. do the uh, the nnrc espanol uh but i think it'd be great it's it's probably similar it's gonna get rough like uh dnc gets rough so yeah. it'd be all right i i think uh i think those hbs and co them hbs will be all right at the dart uh they've won a couple of times so they yeah. should know uh so we shall see all right max i think that's it i don't really have any other news to talk about i may I, there may be some other races going on i think there might be a big race up in pacific northwest maybe in, uh this weekend or the next weekend we know we have montpellier coming on next week oh yeah so we're not going to do any coverage from montpellier we're just going to do a recap people just be freaking out there's no live coverage we, it, it doesn't make sense trying to you know um trying to cover it it's going to be too difficult so we just do a good recap on the monday after but this is the first race of our nnrc europe cup so uh yeah we'll be talking about it we'll be talking about it yeah it's a bit of a bummer i like but then again i think it's well dnc is gonna be here in a few weeks so i think we'll be fine <laughs> fine with yeah, dnc is gonna be but, big dnc is gonna be yeah big. Huge, but for me huge. like yeah, but for me, Montpellier has always been sort of one of the highlights of like the early part of the year. So it's a bit, mm -hmm. it's a bit sad because I was looking forward to like sort of covering this race properly for the first time. But hey, yeah, next year, next year, next year. <laughs> hopefully, we'll have because I think this is one race that even uh, I know a lot of our Ameri of our American listeners don't like that it's a permanent track, or some love it. Like you know what I mean. And yeah. one of the girls is I want people to start watching uh, more more European racing as well, because it's yeah. some good racing. So, but we'll, we'll be covering it. All right. So Max, I think it's time we're going to go into some, some questions. Um, real quick though, we have a message from Lugs, Lugs Racing. We we'll, we'll, they, they have 55 years of combined experience in RC. Lugs have been testing many treads, wheels, and their proprietary rubber compound for performance. You can try their econ line of tires, which are developed with racing budgets in mind. High quality, but lower cost means savings that can be passed on to you, the customer. They also have their pure performance line made using Lugs custom molds and proprietary rubber compound. These tires are, are available in medium soft, mega soft, and now long wear. Uh, you can visit them at lugsracing.com. Save up to 30% on your order with uh coupon code nnrc lugs in all capitals thank you lugs for their time we greatly appreciate them 
know that they do for us. They signed a bunch of guys on their team this year, and uh, I'm sure they'll have a big presence at DNC. Uh, yeah, and also we're going on to our Beach RC Bench Racing Q&A. Thank you to Beach RC for all their support. Uh, it'll be good to see Brent at DNC and Ultimate and all them guys will have a big team there as well. You know, they have some top drivers going there, Cole and all those guys. So thank you for the Bench Racing Q&A and um, yeah, let's get going. BeachRC.com, the racer's one-stop online hobby shop. Choose from all the popular brands and variety in stock with super fast shipping and great customer service. BeachRC.com still has the local hobby shop feel with all the benefits of the internet. BeachRC.com is the exclusive distributor for Ultimate Racing, JQ Racing, Pro Circuit Racing Tires, Nitro Lux Fuels, and Assault RC Performance Products. So fill up your cart and check out at BeachRC.com today. Yes, remember guys, uh, we have thank you to Beach RC, thank you to Brent Lucas. Uh, we have an affiliate link for this. If you guys can use that, it's in the written description of this podcast. We got a little slice, helps us out. Uh, thank you to everybody that sent us some questions. And we're gonna start off real quick with an easy one. Keenan White, Max Moore by uh Ben Tracy's asking, Are you guys coming to DNC? Uh I am. Max is it. Yeah, I kind of like last like last few weeks, people have been asking, am I going? And like before, like when it was like before Christmas, I was like so, so like busy with school, uh, just time with Mayako, the podcast, we were doing stuff. Uh, and so I was kind of busy. So I, then I was like, I don't really even want to go because I'd be too busy. But now I mean, like when it's closer, I'm like, I kind of would have liked to go. But yeah, I think it's, I mean, it would be very busy still, like even now a lot of school stuff. So I think I kind of want to get up to speed with the car before I sort of have any of these big, big events. And, uh, but yeah, I'd be definitely in like, DNC is amazing. I really liked it uh, the last time I, w- I was in. California yeah, is always nice this time of the year. Yeah. Um, if you're an artist, if you are into eight scale racing, you should at least do this race once. Uh, yeah. I've never raced it. But I just enjoy going there. I don't want to. I mean, I don't think I'm even going to be able to race it this year. But uh, yeah, it's great. You don't I really enjoy it. like if you're just a regular hobby guy, you don't really go to DNC for the racing. You go for the to try on the track and hanging out with the people. But yeah, yeah. If you're it's like fun. a top level racer, this is one of the top level races of the like yes. <laughs> anywhere. Yeah, this I would say this race is maybe just a scotch below the world championship in terms yeah. of prestige. It's so, like it's like a supercross. It's like world championships, but only for Americans. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, there are a lot of international people go there. So. Oh, yeah, like kind of like Roxanne and and Musquan and these guys. Yeah, so. yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, because well, it's well, it's not many Americans over doing uh, the MXGP either. So yeah, but that's yeah, yeah. based in Europe. All right, um, all right, but yeah, unfortunately, Max won't be there. Benjamin James. Uh, as for the question this week, is the Pandora's box opened or is there a way to reverse the tide of contract customer sponsor drivers and the effect they are having on local shops and racetracks? Uh, this is a conundrum. I think this comes down to anything similar to... It's like Amazon, man. You know, Amazon's taking over the world. Like, you know, people can order something on Amazon and be here tomorrow. Or if you order it in the morning, you can have it that day, some some circumstances. And that's that's kind of hard to beat. Um that's I think online shops are part of that, like too. Like, you know, that just are online shops, not actually brick and mortar. And I, I mean I don't have nothing against it. I just think it's part of it. But with this, this, this this Pandora, yeah, the box is open and a lot of it's kind of started, kind of probably starting to collapse on itself. But I think the only way you can probably get a con- any type of control of this is if maybe the team managers come together and work together, maybe put some agreements um, with each other. You know that it maybe I don't know. I know it's hard to say. Like it's like it's so hard. Like you know what I mean? It's like yeah. It's like having the solutions for this issue is hard because like if we ha- if we solve this issue in RC, that would solve it in everywhere else because the same issue just 
world in general is having with companies like Amazon becoming too big. Uh, and the way how like all of the sort of smaller shops that actually provide a lot of value are sort of dying out. That's exactly what's happening in RC. And the sponsorship is just one part of that. The, the sponsorship part is just the fact that what, for example, Amazon does is they offer lower prices and what RC, the sponsorship represents the same thing. So the manufacturers then gonna, can offer lower prices and still make sort of a gain out of that. And the fact that they have like, it's sort of genius marketing in the sense that you make these people believe that they are somewhat chosen or accepted to a team or that they are sponsored or somewhat special, even though it's just a contracted customer. And it's like the way sort of the business model works is these people pay almost almost full price. Like a lot of these guys are like minus 25% off or something like something like some people are not even that. Well, so it's off such these... an inflated MSRP. I think essentially yeah. it does it off of a high retail, but yeah, yeah, it's just that's that's the thing. Like the box is open and it ain't it ain't closing ever. And I think <laughs> like it's it's like some people say like, oh, we need to go back to clubs selling cars, and we need to go back to oh, not clubs like hobby shops selling cars, and we need to go back to this and that. But the fact is that we ain't gonna go back the postage postage costs are low enough where it's easy easy enough to ship ship stuff uh a main is big enough where they can kill almost any shop shop if they really want to uh, i think a main has been doing a really good job like trying to preserve rc and make sort of rc accept uh, accessible to all so i don't want to sort of vilify uh, a main but like they are very big in the industry and these sort of brands are trying to compete with a main instead of just competing with uh with, other with shops. sort of rick yeah with other yeah. shops and i think i think yeah I, I don't think we're ever gonna go away from this sort of turn but what we in instead should look at is how we make this sort of manageable and sustainable i think mm -hmm. Again, a, a shameless plug, but how Mayako does it, where it's it's a sort of um, a community-based thing. So you buy into more than just the, the car and you buy into more than just the sponsorship. You are actually sort of invested in a community and you choose to view RC in a certain way and you get with like-minded people and you all have the same sort of goals and you get more input, you get sort of you buy more than just the product and uh, you get more than just the sponsorship and you like it's it's everyone can go there so that's i don't i don't i don't know if that's the way to go in the future but that's one way to go around this sort of issue i think billy Tylaska also said that he's not doing sponsorships he's doing sort of this community thing kind of because he said like anyone who sends an email they they can get a deal and it's mm -hmm. not like a sponsorship deal. It's like like we'll sort you out. I think I think that is just the future of how it is gonna be. And what I wish would happen is instead of this sort of every year end uh, sending your race resume out and getting your twenty five percent deal, instead of all of that happening and these brands competing and offering like crazy low deals so that no one gets any profit or gets any sort of good and like everyone loses e everyone's eating the same pie and like it's, it's not growing so instead of that happening we need to look into ways that can in like add value to rc as a sport uh, make it easier make it more accessible make it more fun and make it so that it's sustainable with more people and it's sustainable with the people we have right now I think these are the ways we need to look forward to and we need to stop thinking that we're going to go back to how it was before because we are not going to go the the world has changed and it keeps changing all, always and instead of instead of trying to like sort of rewind we need to look forward i i actually have nothing else to add to that <laughs> yeah <laughs> i, can't I went say on anymore. for quite a bit <laughs> I, I know i just let you get on your soapbox there i was like and you yeah. was like i'm not trying to vilify i was like oh we're breaking up big words vilify even though that's not a big word 
Uh, I agree with you, dude. I agree with you 100%. Um, I also think maybe a little bit of... Um, I, I definitely think maybe as team managers, we could come together and have a little some some rules and regulations to to certain things, how things are done. Yeah, I and, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be against having sort of like the manufacturers actually working together. Like mm-hmm. uh, again, a shameless plug for RCGP. No, no, okay, I thought you <laughs> like, say Mayako. <laughs> RCGP, who are, we are sort of somewhat affiliated with. Uh, like that's something where these uh, brands who are in RCGP and connected to RCGP are generally like willing to work together. And that's the idea of why the series is built because yeah. So putting, putting those efforts into sort of one and creating as much as we can together, because right now it's like everything, everyone's fighting against each other. Some people go to one race, like, like, TLR goes to one race and then Associated goes to one race and Mugen team goes to one race. So like if if people sort of work together and made it midlife easier for each other, I think that could be a way forward where like we don't waste as much resources and we have the little what we have and use it for good. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I agree with you 100%, dude. Next question. Connie Swenson, House of RC. How you doing? Uh, gonna be doing all my blogs in there. Hope I think we're gonna try and make that the center for all the DNC coverage as well. Got to figure that out before I leave. Why aren't eight scale cars using different size front and rear tires or different? I think you mean size because you know like four wheel drive yeah. ten scale cars yeah. use thinner tires than they were. Why is that? That's a good question actually. I think I think that's mainly because the rear tires for two wheel drive cars are very wide. So when I, because I'm pretty sure like in the nineties, two wheel drive was the only class to start out with. Then someone said, Hey, why don't we do four wheel drive? Right. And then they realized like the, like the front tires would be too wide. So they made thinner ones. Then over time, the two wheel drive tires have become different to four wheel drive front, front tires. So that's why they are like that now. Why they aren't this like that in eight scale. Uh, probably because of the exact same reason that they used to always be the same front and rear in, in eight scale. But mm-hmm. I think if we like, we're thinking, should we go to different size tires? My my pick would be absolutely no, because that would just add costs, and I think that would be a bit unnecessary for just in general because the the tires we have now work really really well. Uh, the tires we have now, it's rather cheap to produce. So it would be if we would widen the rear tires. So uh, you couldn't really narrow the front tires, but you could widen the rear tires. But if we would do that, I don't think it would add anything of value, and it would just uh, in, in, introduce more costs because you would have the wheels grabbing the linkages in the rear, uh, and uh, you would just have to make new molds, new tires. You would have to do different different setups. Like everything would have to change, and even after everything had changed i don't think it would be any better yeah i don't i don't know either it's yeah it's weird yeah to me to me if i'm being honest i wouldn't mind 10 scale four wheel drive going to same tires front and rear but that would also mean that the rear tires of tool drive would have to change which realistically it's not going to happen and it's not worth it so i don't see that changing either in that way just it is how it is, and I think I think it works out fine how it is. I don't see big issues in this this sector. Okay. Austin Schaefer, in e buggy, would you run straight five millimeter bullets or run a connector? I've seen both, or is it just a pre- preference? I always run uh, connector. Yeah, I think some connectors are good. Like I think XT sixty, yeah nineties, yeah nineties are the bigger ones. So the XT nineties I think are the best, or it's similar to the EC five or IC five. Some brands call it that as well. Those have very good sort of like very low resistance and they have good conductivity. So I think I think those could work out fine. But if you use Deans or anything like that, don't use them. Bullets are generally pretty good, but you need to keep replacing them a bit because they do wear out a bit more. Mm. Uh, but I have myself always used bullets because it's so much easier to solder, it's less weight, and it's less hassle. So 
I'm I'm I would be rooting for bullets myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I've always used connectors, uh, but bullets then you can only get you know you I always yeah, they, find that bullet batteries are really expensive too. Yeah, they are more expensive and, and the fear always is with using bullets is you you plug them up the wrong way and, and sh- like I would definitely do something like that. Goes. Yeah. Definitely, I would do something like that. I could definitely see me doing something. All right, next question is, uh, next question is actually about no prep drag racing and it's from Chris Oxley. And he asks, uh, he asks recently, so I, I don't know if well, you don't follow this, but that no, this no prep stuff is just, so huge right now right max so huge like um there was there was this big race in south florida miami where this guy won like eight thousand dollars there's like three thousand dollar turnkey sub two second cars and it's just going crazy that's fine that's what it's gotta be or whatever, right? So they introduced this 13.5 class to it last year or a couple years ago. Oh, and so, no. yeah, exactly. So this 13, could you, could you imagine this is just now all going haywire. So apparently Jim Campbell is the guy from Tekken and apparently his beef is with like R1 or something like that. And he's saying Ooh. that basically R1 is uh, using a 10.5 motor in their 13.5 and he knows because he like unassembled all the coils and yeah the, the, this the is thing like is, truly a nerd fight like i saw can't remember his name now a very very sort of old school associated touring car driver rick howard maybe i can't no i'm blanking on his name but he he's also i think he's has been involved in reedy a lot so he made a post a while back about the same issue in 17.5. And uh, the way electric motors work, the coils aren't like that simple because you actually have to count sort of how the magnets work, how the coils are, and how, I, I don't know exactly how it works, but you have to sort of, the, how the coils are counted is like sort of a division equation. So you can sort of cheat in a way where you have the same amount of like coils in theory, but mm-hmm. in actuality, it's, it would, it would be different. So that's why I think what, what Jim Campbell is saying, if that's what he's saying that you can sort of cheat where if you would just take a quick look at it or disassemble it like by hand, you can sort of, that way it would look normal, like the 13.5. But then when you actually look at the engine, how it works and see how it's done, and then you can see that it isn't done that way. I have no clue if R1 has done it. I don't really know myself how you would even do that. But I I, he, I think I think it, it was Rick Howard who explained this on Facebook. Okay. Uh, so that's where I saw this uh, a while back. But yeah, it's to me, these, these spec classes are a bit of a joke because this is all oh, this always happens mm-hmm. i have never seen a spec class that's like people don't cheat with the motors or blinky like they have a speedo and then they somehow get some timing on it even though it's blinky and it's just like it's been done it's like come on <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know dude i don't know all i know is that like this whole drag racing thing has blown up so crazy um, I don't know, like, I'm not trying to be negative, but it's like, when is it going to implode on it? Like, it's so much money in this. Yeah. Like, wow. It, um, it is a bubble for sure. Uh, I think it's cool and I think it's here to stay, but the way it's growing and the, the like, the, how much money people, like, I saw someone selling cars for like three and a half grand or something crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I get it. I, I get it for him because he puts a lot of work into mm-hmm. it, but the fact that like he's sold them out pretty much when i looked at the post it felt like yeah like <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> it's making money right now making a yeah, lot of money no doubt uh j 
Justin Huglin, dude, it was I was on the Discord with these guys the other day. Not ours, but a different one. Which reminds me, join our, our Discord. Try yeah. to be nice too. Not, don't try to be a dickhead <laughs> on our on the Discord. Yeah. Um dude, it was awesome chatting with you on the Discord the other night. Would you ever schedule some time to do a show with some viewers hanging out in the Discord? I don't know how we would do that. I think that would be cool. We'd have to get uh Yeah. One thing one thing on the Mayaka Discord people oftentimes do, they just hang out on the voice channel mm-hmm. if they're like doing something. I think I think people should be feel free to do that on the uh, um no the Marcia Discord as well. So if you're just hanging yeah. out, go into the voice chat. If someone's joining there, they can have a chat. And if, if you see someone in the voice chat and you have like time to chat up, go go talk to new people. It's 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 actually really nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, I need to get on there more often too. Maybe next week I'll be in the office a little bit more and I can do yeah. that. Uh, Joseph Kud asks if you're going to DNC. We already went over that. My buddy Marlo Marlo Bright. What's up, dude? What is more valuable today as a sponsor? Your social media presence or the or he goes, okay, what is more valuable today at for a sponsor? Your social media presence and or ability or or ability or your race results. Uh I know what it's getting at. It seems like all you need to do is be able to post really good on, on Facebook nowadays and you can get a, a a bunch of sponsors, which is true. I will say that. Uh, but I think, I think what's important for most sponsors is a mixture of all of that. And then I think the least thing they really worry about is race results at the end of the day. Well, I would, because at the end of the day, I wish to tell people to, um, have fun first. So, uh, social media, I have some people that are really good at the track, know that are really good at the track and help people out and they could get good results, but they don't like social media. You know what I mean? That's acceptable too. Uh, so but there are people out there that are just fast on, on Facebook. So yeah. And they seem to get a lot of sponsors and that seems to be very valuable nowadays because that's promotion. And, uh, that takes you outside of your area. And if you got a following and stuff like that, you become an influencer and whatnot. So, yeah, I, to me, or somewhat of an influencer, is, somewhat of an influencer. Yeah. To me, to me, this sort of situation is kind of like, uh, can't think of a very good example now, but they are like F1 drivers that are sponsored by car companies. And then they are such social media influencers who are sponsored by car companies. Mm -hmm. This is sort of the same thing where for a brand, sometimes it's valuable just to create a brand image. I think Ryan Stiles Harris is the best sort of example of this. Whereas he isn't a racer as in he wants to like, he, he, he isn't sponsored by TLR because he's a great racer or, Like he's sponsored because results. he makes great videos. He's good. He's yeah. an ambassador, all that type of stuff. And I, I, think, I think that is fine. And I think people should sort of get out of this idea that I need to win races so I can get sponsored and I can get my 30% off discount. You should have the idea of I, I'm going to the track and I'm going to compete and I'm going to have fun unless you are actually looking to go pro. And like, again, sorry to break it to you, but most of us aren't going to go pro. Uh, there are a set set amount of people who can look forward to it and can try to achieve that. But the sponsorship you, you get at that point are very different. The, the sponsorships, like the reason why TLR sponsored Fullers for the longest time isn't because they won races at that time. It was because they are very talented and they were seeming to become very successful at some point. So they wanted to keep it at the team and give these kids the opportunity to one day become very good. Obviously, as soon as he became good, he left TLR. And I think that's a mistake on them. The the TLR should have held on to them much better because that's what they grew up with. And I think it would be very good to see them succeed with TLR. But I think that's sort of the sponsorships where people think they have. But in reality, that's not the sponsorships you have. There are very few guys like Mason Fuller and I think the sponsorship like that is very great and that should never be sort of dismissed at all. That's one of the best types of sponsorship. But then there's the other end of it, like complete other end, which is Ryan Styles Harris. And then everyone else also sort of falls in between this. Uh, and I think this is sort of the issue a lot of times when people think they're, they, they are going to be that sort of next pro. And then some guys are just like, hey, I want to get my sponsorship. I want to have RC. I want to have cool looking cars and I'm going to post stuff on social media. 
And I think for brands, it uh, like a lot of these guys don't matter at all. It, it's just a contracted customer. I think it's what you value in ours. If if you value your results and you you after you get home from work, you want to go to the track and win, then you do that, and then you get just sponsorship through that. If you're the guy who wants to like share how he drives RC, share his passion for RC, and you do that through social media and you have people who follow you and you want to uh, sort of give people inspiration, you get sponsorship through that, then that's fine. But I don't think there is sort of room in RC for sort of being, oh, this is better than that, or I need to get sponsored because of this. And he got sponsored even though he gets he's worse than me. Most of you guys are getting sponsored just because you you pay the money. Like I'm sorry to say it out loud, but <laughs> that, that's how RC works now. The sort of issue of getting sponsored isn't like it used to be before. Yeah, there's no it, it's not it a in skateboarding. Yeah, it's I, I keep coming into this too. It's not about sponsorship does not represent skill level anymore, you know? No. And, and we, I, I don't think it should really. They they for now. some people for some people it should. Like for yes. people like Mason Fuller, it should represent skill level. Mm -hmm. But some people uh, like can't think of anything other than Ryan Stiles Harris. But they for sure are guys who aren't that good at yeah, driving. Yeah, like look at me. But I get well, wow, the podcast got sponsors. I yeah. suck. Actually, one guy, Ray Monday. He's one of the most valuable people I know in at least the Australian scene of RC. Mm -hmm. I've never seen like win too many races at least these past few years i don't know if he was good in the past but he's a guy who pretty much the only reason he's sponsored by AE at this moment is because he has a very a lot of knowledge he provides a lot to his community he mm -hmm. provides a lot to rc in general and he's very knowledgeable about stuff so that is completely fine and i'd be very happy to sponsor him if i ever had an rc company and and I don't think like it's 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 good to complain that people get sponsorship because of like something else than being good, and yeah, I think I think sort of the people sort of confuse the fact that some of these sponsorships are di like there are different levels of sponsorship. Some of you guys are just sponsored so you can get a deal. Some of the people are sponsored because they actually add value to the brand, and uh, yeah, it's it's. Like most of these, most people who are sponsored are not adding much to the brand apart from the local hobby shop. And that's why I think like Finland, it's been very good now that most of the sponsorships people have are through the hobby shop. So they actually work for the community in that sort of area. They work for that hobby shop, like how they build their image. And I think that's more important than driving for AE or driving for TLR or any brand for that matter as a sponsored driver. Yeah, I see people uh, that, like, for instance, they just drive for BTRC and use their discount yeah. at BTRC to buy That's whatever great. car they want. That's fine, yeah. too. That's I, I, fine. I, I'd much rather see something like that than people sort of getting a 25% deal and trying to be, I'm the S-Works guy, like, S-Works is the best. I love S-Works. And every time someone wins a race with S-Works, you share it on social media and go crazy about it. I mean, if that's something you like to do and that makes you feel fine, then great. But if if you are doing something just to get sponsorships that you don't like and that makes you dislike RC, stop doing it. Start yeah, doing stuff that makes you happy in RC and stop mm -hmm. thinking about the stuff that makes you miserable. And I agree with like you. That's how everyone should uh, take the attitude towards RC. Find the things that make you happy in this sport and try to maximize that yeah and remember it's about having fun for us yeah exactly <clears throat> all right will cunningham real quick in jq's pillowball video he made the suggestion of running 3k in the center diff to keep the rear end from wanting to drive as much out of a corner what do you think about that wouldn't wouldn't that be too low on the straights and cause the front tires to balloon i think uh you need the heavier diff on the front as well, right? Maybe, but not necessarily. I think the reason, and people have to also remember this, is when Joseph says that, he means cars like Mugen specifically and Associated specifically because of the rear hub design. So the issue why Mugen and Associated are somewhat slippy in the rear end when, it's, when it gets dusty 
it's not because of the front end it's because of specifically the low offset in the rear end so this 3k uh for the hdc diffs in ae and the big gears in the mugen uh i think 3k would still be all right uh with the low traction diffs on associated 5k probably would be your minimum mm -hmm. you could ever go to but generally what this does is it allows the car to not spin out when you go on power it allows the front end to grip up first and then as soon as you pick up speed uh you sort of the the um, the power balance out between the front and the rear end uh this is a good way and i would suggest it and if it balloons then just go a little bit thicker but go you can when you have this issue you can try to go as low as you can before the ballooning happens yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot that with like with the HD diffs, the Mugen use a lot lighter oil. <clears throat> yeah, because of the gear size and the bigger diffs and all that stuff. Yeah, I forgot all about that. All right, we got an Instagram question from KB Wolf. He goes, "What's up, dudes? Does pineapple belong on pizza? I think so. I love pineapple on pizza. <laughs> uh, I know who hates pineapple I mean, on pizza. I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna shoot you if you put pineapple on a pizza, but." I'm definitely going to shake my head a bit and then... It's good. I love Hawaiian pizza. pizza. You know who hates it? Yeah. Mom, don't ever mention that to mom. Yeah, like any Italian, if you ever mention pineapple and pizza in the same sentence, they go into panic mode. They like they have a panic <laughs> attack straight out. All right. You see so the it... face go red and shaking and all that. It's crazy. He asks, uh, he wants some tips when racing on a new track or layout, mainly the first practice lap. Is it full send or slow rolling the jumps? I, and you don't want to full send it because you might break it right away. Yeah. What I usually do is if it's a crazy big jump, I just roll it the first lap. But generally, all of the jumps these days and all of the tracks are fairly easy to go over just to get the landing perfect. That's the hard part. What I usually do is I just take a really slow I usually do a tank where I just sort of look at where you can jump, where the lines go. And then after the first tank, I try to sort of find speed. You just send it? Zero responsibility? Yeah. I always have very good responsibilities. So I'm I'm, I'm not sort of, I, I'm not that kind of a... You, you're a little better than the average guy though, Max. You can, you're younger. You, yeah, you, know so how, you, you can drive getting, pretty good. Yeah. For, for me, getting used to a new track isn't that difficult generally. So I... I maybe I just, maybe it's I just roll around for me to answer. Roll around, try not to crash. Then you just figure out. <clears throat> I just like for me as an average racer, or used to be, just roll around and figure out which you can jump. Look at people who are jumping where, and then just see if you can do it. You know, until you yeah. get comfortable. That's the best thing. One, I would one say. thing I've noticed though, it's very valuable to get continuous laps because if you do yeah. one lap crash, one lap crash you never get the flow and you never mm -hmm. sort of understand what's the flow of the track. So even if you go very slow, but you don't crash for, let's say, five minutes, you start to understand the track and where you need to go and what you need to do. So I think that is very important. Like a lot of people who, like I know a lot of people who, even like very high level drivers who just like first practice run, they just cr crash everywhere. And uh, that is very hurtful for your driving i think because you never like every time you go into a corner you have just like crashed like in the past few corners you need like you need to sort of get the rhythm back and then continue so for sure if you can like just try not to crash for the first tank or two and then after that try to speak up speed that's for sure the best way and also you get the most track time as well especially if you have to like if you're not at the race where there's no marshals definitely then try not to crash sweet uh some discord questions uh robert parenti what's the difference when changing kick up anti-squat between a c blocks and b and d blocks yeah so this is this is something uh some people sort of think like should i raise the d block to reduce anti-squat or should i lower the c block so basically what's happening here is when you reduce anti-squat or kick up or increase on the other hand you're also raising the sort of you're raising the arm up, uh, so this basically means that you're uh, if you're if you're uh, adding anti squat from the C block, you're raising the arm up. Uh, this way, you will have a, a higher roll center in the rear, so it makes the rear end a bit stiffer. If you are 
adding uh, anti-squat uh, from the D block instead, you are lowering the rear arm, and this has the opposite effect. It lowers the roll center, you have a bit more grip. Um, same with the front. The lower the arm, generally, the more roll, the more grip you have with the car. Uh, so this is something that's the key here. Like, if your car feels uh, stiff, but it still squats some power, you, uh, of course, want to lower, like, add anti-squat from the D block. If your car feels soft, but it squats some power, you want to add the anti-squat from the C block. And same with the front, if you need kick up to, um, to allow the car to uh, dive a bit more, uh, but still the car front end feels really edgy. You can do it from the B block. So you lower the arm, uh, calms, the, calms down the car a bit and lets it dive a bit more. And then the opposite for, for the A block. So uh, you need to think like when you, when you raise something up to add kick up or add anti-squat, you are like raising the arm up and stiffening up the car and then the opposite for lowering the arm and, and uh, you're smoothing the car out. Yeah, I'm definitely not the person to ask that question. <laughs> 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 definitely not. All right, um, a couple more. Hold on, where did I go here? One more. I think we have one more Discord question from M3DN3. What is rotation? When I hear people talking about yeah. how their car does and doesn't do it, and what the, what does this mean? Is it when the rear end breaks loose in a corner, or is it when the car is steering a lot and following a sharp curve? This is one of the questions that got me really excited because I always feel people misunderstand. They always say my car doesn't steer or my car steers, or if there isn't rear grip in the car, they just say, "Oh, it fish fish tails," or if if it's very aggressive into the corner, they just say too much steering. I think it's it's important to understand like rotation steering. So I'll 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 start in the, on this podcast. I'll start out with rotation and steering, and what's the difference? So generally, the way I think of it, and some people would define it maybe a bit differently, but steering is the front end doing stuff. So steering is mm -hmm. where you turn the wheels and you can feel the input. So a more precise car, more sort of stiff front end that really grabs onto the, the track, that is steering. When you go into a corner and you turn and the car immediately reacts, that is steering. But when you go into the deep end of the corner, you can have a car that has a lot of steering, but in the middle of the corner, you just feel the car is a bit stuck. You can't get it over, rotating over where you can go on power early on. So rotation is when sort of this middle section of the corner, if you have more rotation, the car wants to sort of straighten out for the next straight. If you don't have enough rotation, you, you're going to get stuck in the corner. So the rotation, how I would explain it is when you feel the car sweeps around the corner as fast as it can, and then you can go on power. So rotation can be added by reducing sort of uh, towing, for example. That's one of the best ways to add rotation to the car. So the rear wheels aren't sort of stopping the car in the middle of the corner. Uh, some ways uh, to add rotation as well, sometimes uh, adding uh, or uh, hiring the roll centers of the car. That's something to sometimes you can add uh, um, rotation in the car. Uh, sometimes if you raise the roll center, uh, lower the roll center in the rear, that can add rotation as the rear end isn't gripping that much. It allows the front end to steer and the rear end just follows and doesn't stick to bumps and such. Um, Laying down the shocks, that generally adds a lot of rotation. It stiffens up the roll of the car, but keeps the car soft sort of up on the up and down motion. Uh, so those sort of things are that you can add rotation with. The car is stiff to the roll, so it keeps sort of going, going on, on the steering. Like as soon as you steer, you have the steering to get the car into the corner, and then you need the car to rotate uh, because when you get the car to rotate, you can go on power earlier on. And the, the car, for the car to rotate, first the front wheels must turn and it needs to spin the car around the central axis of the car. So the rear ends sort of always have to slide a bit out and the front tires have to always go a bit in. So if your car is the front end isn't getting the car in or the rear end is uh, trying to not let like. Um, going against of the rear end, going a bit out, 
you will have less rotation. So you want to, to add more rotation to the car, you will either add something for the rear so that the rear end is allowed to uh, slide out a bit or so that the front end keeps turning and doesn't stall in the corner. Uh, so that sort of uh, rotation describes much better the whole attitude of the car, where steering just describes the attitude of the front end on its own. Sweet. You went full science mode on that one. Yeah, that was that's full one of my favorite mode. things because a lot of people always say I don't have enough steering where they mean they don't have enough rotation because you can have a car that has crazy amount of steering, but then you're in the corner and you're just stuck there. You can't get the car to turn around. In that situation, right. oftentimes laying the front trucks down on the tower, uh, lower toe in on the rear, uh, sometimes stiffer springs too can help in the rear, especially. Uh, or so, like one thing actually that helps a lot with rotation is is uh, thinner diffs, uh, especially in the front, sometimes in the rear as well. So those things, something too you could think of. Yeah, I think that's all our questions for this week, though, Max. Yeah, um, we have one question, but I'm gonna save that for our next set, uh, next bunch of doing this because I kind of have to word this properly. It's a it's a yeah, yeah. it's a question <laughs> that I, the person wants to stay anonymous, and it's about some it's about uh, a team manager in RC, and I, I have to figure out how I'm going to wear this. Maybe I'll ask it in the next <laughs> one. Uh, but thank you, everybody, for sending in your questions. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you to Beach RC for their support. Thank you to Max for going and completing Total Science Mode and asking all this and answering those questions. He loves it. Hey, people, he loves this part of the podcast. Yeah, this is this is uh, sort of my favorite section of the podcast. has been since the start. I, I love it. Yeah, Makes he, me happy sort of talking about RC. Uh, and especially like, like I, I said, we talked about this a few podcasts ago, but like, it's important to like remind yourself that why you are doing this. And for mm -hmm. me, like, this is the part where I really love RC, the fact that it's actually a race car and you can drive it around the track and you can pick it with a bag and put it in your car and then just drive to the track instead of having trailers and stuff. And it's affordable. It's fun. And yeah, it's everything about RC is just like, it's simple and it's still so uh there's still so much to it yeah so sweet yeah. well anyway guys remember uh check out beach rc use that affiliate link if you guys can we got a little slice of that we appreciate it we're going on to the techno rc main interview and i'll have mac back max the arrogant one back for our conclusion techno rc techno rc Techno RC is a premium manufacturer specializing in 8th and 10th scale high performance off road RC buggies and trucks. Visit www.technorc.com for a complete catalog of their products. Techno RC, excellence in engineering. Hashtag Techno Takeover. So joining me in the virtual studio of the NNRC podcast is a good friend of mine. Uh, he just had a big race where he gave away a lot of stuff. And uh, I really like the layout. And he it's a type of race that he does to give back to his RC community. If you guys don't know who he is, he's Chris Nelson, the owner of TNR Fuels. What's up, Chris? How are you, man? What's up, guys? How you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are you? Oh, man, another day, brother. Another day in RC paradise. How how's how's things in California? How's the weather today? Because we're coming up on DNC here in three weeks' time. I hope we have some decent weather. We will, man. Uh, uh, the weather's good. It's sun's out, but it's a little cold. But uh, it's perfect, man. You know, we're we we had our week or two of rain for the year, so we're good to go. So DNC's a go, man. <laughs> Sweet, awesome, awesome. Uh, well, thank you for joining me. Um, congratulations on the A main challenge uh, that you had her a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Uh, your second annual race. Uh, that you've done this the second time that you've done it you went all out you had mod there i think by the way i just want to give him his props again i think he did a great job uh, uh matt olson he's he's a one-man team he's doing a good job of his production it gets better every time that he does it so shout out to him uh people had a lot of fun this is people want a lot of stuff which is great we're going to talk all about that in a little bit right. uh, because we're going to talk about that race but uh yeah here we are like one year later you're on the podcast we you know tnr fuels is everywhere uh i remember when you first came on the podcast and we start we, you know you first came on the scene uh congratulations dude like one year on how are how are things going one year on with tnr fuels 
Man, it's it's a true blessing, man. Um, again, to turn my hobby into work, uh, it's it's been fun, man. We've we've actually, you know, we owned a, a security company, and we had to actually slow that down to almost a halt so we can concentrate 100% on the field because the field is just so uh, it picked up rapidly and just stronger than we ever imagined. So uh, we were losing a little bit by you know holding off on the field and working security when you know in reality we were. You know, I take a day off of work uh, from from the field to work security, and then I come back with emails and mm-hmm. text and messages of you know orders and etc. So uh, we now we're this year we're concentrating 100 percent on the field. So that's that's a blessing. I love it. That's pretty amazing. I remember when you told me that, I was like, "Wow, you're doing this full time." Yeah, and uh, that's good to her. I mean, I do this full time as well. I I know how consuming RC is. And especially when you have something that's successful. Uh, what have been some of the congratulations on that, by the way? Congratulations. You, Not Thank very you. often that a new product comes on and is successful so fast. So I'm happy to hear yeah. that. Thank you so much. Uh, what do you what do you think has been the reason for that? Why have you guys been successful? Uh, I think we I think we hit the RC scene a little different than other companies. You know, I mm-hmm. think uh, my wife and I, you know, we strategize, you know, we put some strategies together to to make it work somewhat you know and then at the end of the day i was like you know what if it doesn't work me and my homies got fuel to last us for the rest of our life so that's the way we took it but you know i mean with this wouldn't have happened without the help of like guys promoting it for us mm-hmm. really, you know on their own you know chase at racecraft matt at mod these other companies uh um tyler brown with jt barons these mm-hmm. guys have huge followings so without their help and commitment, it's just it, this our product just doesn't do, do what it does. So um, yeah, you've uh, been everywhere, dude. Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. And, and then of course myself, I traveled. That was a that was a dream come true because you right. know I've, pros travel. You know they they're paid to travel. Not everyone's in the position to travel like that. So last year I got to do the traveling, going to the East Coast, going to the South, going everywhere to race. That was a dream come true for me. So. Um, ton of fun, and now I'm looking this year to do international traveling. So that's gonna be oh, fun. really? Let's All right. Her. Well, let's touch on that real quick. So, like I said, you you do have a lot of people promoting your fuel all over America, Canada. Um, I'm not sure how you guys are doing internationally. I know you have uh, Kyle McBride, or is he is Kyle McBride still running TNR? Yeah. Kyle, we just had a big conversation with him the other day. He's super okay. stoked. He just switched over to uh, OS, and he's running it. Uh, we're actually we're in Canada, Mexico, Australia. Um, Japan, um, uh, Costa Rica, and um, uh, there's another one I'm drawing a blank on, but I'm, I'm drawing a blank on another. Okay, well, but you haven't got into Europe, Europe yet, right? Uh, not yet. We haven't hit okay. Europe yet. Yeah, because we'll, they have we'll, their strict we'll, we'll regulations too. Uh, what was that? They have strict regulations now, yes, I think yes. too. Yeah, so. yeah. So there it's a little tough to work with, but um, mm-hmm. we're still trying. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to see. Uh, what's been some of the well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rewind. I'm, you said you're going to go international. So where where are you planning on going? Um. Well, the world. You know the the on road na- or on road nationals. Yeah, in Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico. I'm trying to go to the. Uh, we're going to go to Puerto Rico, and then obviously the off road um, worlds. Off road worlds because we we got to get our fuel out there ahead of time. So we're already doing trips to get out there and right. meet up with the tracks, etc. So we will be one of the fuel companies at the worlds. Oh, great! I I am because I actually would love to go to the on road nats as well. Yes. And Barcelona, because Puerto yes. Rico is not far from me at all. Nice. And, okay. And uh, I just, I'm happy for those guys for getting that race. And onward's pretty big there. And yes. I've never been to a big onward race, so I really want to go. Nice. And yeah. I definitely have never been to a world, so I'm, I'm planning to be at Redovan as well. Nice. Uh, if so I will see you there. I can't wait. Yes, sir. Uh, so that's good. That's good to that's good to hear. Uh, so, mm-hmm. so what have been some of your biggest hurdles? in uh an upstart fuel company coming into rc doing things a little bit different different from everybody else uh what have been some of the hurdles man you know be honest with you it 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 wasn't we didn't really have hurdles i guess um i guess once we once i understood the blends of what we were trying to do and get it out there i guess it was more of answering questions to guys that didn't understand our field. If that makes any sense. Um, uh, you know, our field's a little different. I, you know, I had to come up. I can like, I, like I talk to my team guys now. 
And I've told people in the past, I couldn't come out with a field that was hot fire for the mm -hmm. pros that, you know, they run it a motor or engine here, you know, one or two races and now they're on to the next because, you know, the bearings won't last long, et cetera, et cetera. So I had to come out with a field that was for your starter all the way up to a pro that can handle it. Mm -hmm. So in between that, we have us drivers, like your expert drivers, your 40 plus drivers, your uh, other pros that I don't want to say aren't as don't tune as well. I'm not going to say that, but I know what you mean. Like, like your pro, like, like your Cal, like Cavalieri take, for example, he runs our field and he's, he's winning left and right with it. You know, mm -hmm. but then you drop down to some guys in my class that are having issues tuning wise, you know, not right. saying tuning or motors or engines. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it, 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 it goes back and forth. And those are the hurdles that I've had to deal with, but it, it's kind of cool because now we have our, we have our race blend coming out for off-road now, actually right before DNC. Uh, okay. It's going to be more for our team guys first, and then we'll release it, you know, worldwide. But um, but believe it or not, we haven't had really any hurdles. It's, it's been a smooth ride. We've Once we got the blend up and running, it's, mm -hmm. I guess, um, getting it out to as many people as we can has been the hardest part, you know? Yeah. Oh, so how many different blends do you have now? Um, well, off-road, uh, this is good. Well, we have our, again, we have our on-road blends, the two blends there, which we're working on a second blend. Um, Paolo Margatti, he's one of our team guys. He's helping mm -hmm. us out with that in the on-road side. But um, uh, we got the on-road blends, and then we got our off-road blends, which is, the you know, the off-road 30%, and then we have our 20% too. So, but again, we're coming out with our newer racer blend, which has a little bit less oil, a little bit more pop. Okay. So I'm um, pretty sure the guys will be happy with that blend. <laughs> yeah, Morgante is a really good GT driver. Oh, he, he, yeah. you see, you guys call him GT driver. When I first saw that guy drive, he was an eight skill driver. And really? He, he, God damn, the dude is fast as hell, dude. He's from Peru or something like that, right? Um, I believe so. He, like from, Italian Peru or something he's, like he's that. Italian, I believe. But I yeah. mean, of course, he's in Miami. But um, but yeah, but he is a uh, phenomenal eight skill driver, man. Yeah. Yeah, actually, Tesco, he's he's just an on road driver. The cat is okay. he's amazing. So. Yeah, that's like a whole new world for me. But I like I like the nitro side of it. It's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, how about uh, greatest rewards, dude? What's been some of the greatest rewards doing this so far Man, after a you, year? You know what? Uh, I've got to spend a little bit more time with, believe it or not, because I travel. But I've got to spend a lot more time with at home with the family, and um, and my wife is more involved with this business compared to my security business. So she's more hands on. I mean, you guys see, she I don't know if you can see. You know, she did the logo. Oh, mm -hmm. um, she's just hands on. She's the one on the website. She's designing our website. She's doing this and this. So her and I have got to work a lot together. And then, of course, I get to race a lot more. So that's mm. been that's just been the best thing ever. So, um, you know, to have my own race, my wife there supporting me and she's happy about it, not mad about it. Uh, <laughs> that's huge. That's a win situation. A win yeah. yeah. Situation and then I, right I, you know, I'm at home with the kids a lot more. So it's been fun. That's That's been a positive a plus. I would say so. Yeah, I, I, me working at home and doing this allows me to be around my family more. Yeah. If I wasn't, I probably wouldn't be here. I'd be working somewhere else. <laughs> right. So I get all of that, and it's great. She's involved um, yeah. because it takes two to tango or yeah. more, yes, and definitely. it's hard to do it when when your your significant other doesn't really get what you're doing. Exactly. So does she get to travel with you? Uh, um, has she been able? Has she enjoyed that? A little bit. She did a little bit. You know, I think she did. We did Texas and Arizona, I think. But international, she'll definitely be traveling with us. So, oh yeah, she's still in go. So uh, oh, I know. Yeah, she's my right hand man on that one. Oh, I oh yeah. She um yeah. She, she's from Peru, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she's actually, Peru. racing is really growing in, in Peru a lot. We can't wait in, to get off road. Off road. Yeah, yeah. On road is big out there, but yeah. off road is starting to grow tremendously. So you're right. Yeah. So. So yeah, that's good cool. to see. I remember when Joseph and I first went there, they were like driving around like the guy that's really headed it all up. He was had some little track with a little small driver stand and all like they have a national championship. It's good to see wow. you guys got to get down there. Yes, all right. Yeah, let's yeah. talk a little bit of on road. Uh, you you did. Uh, what was it? The nationals last year or was it yes. the worlds that we had? So the nationals national, at Steel City. National at Steel well, City. At Steel City. Correct. Right. Yes. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. Yes. We, uh, we had a big, big turnout for that uh, with TNR Fields. We, uh, uh, Robbie Serrato, our, our factory driver, mm -hmm. uh, he was able to TQ eight scale pro with our fuel and then qualify second or third in sedan only to have, you know, traffic issues or whatever. But, um, and that right there was, that was huge for us because, mm -hmm. you know, there was some, you know, on road again, 
like you, on road was new to me. And those where I got into on roads for our fuel to, you know, to learn to test. But then the on road side guys is a whole different beast than off road. These guys are at a different level of RC. I just, I'm not, I'm not downing off. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Guys, yeah. There it's very, I've learned so, I mean, I've been in RC for so long, but then I learned so much from, uh, you know, Walter, Robbie, Dave Blakely. These guys have taught me extremely so much. So, um, uh, tuning wise, breaking in engine wise, like like I just have my Reds team manager Colin Herzig asking me how do I break in my engines because now my off road engines run much different and better than what I've done previously, and that's because I've taken the on road stuff and brought it over to off road, and that concept has just been nice. So um, they're scientists. I have a buddy. He's an on road guy, right? Yeah. Like, this guy is such a scientist. He's like if I had to, he he just loves wrenching and he. I have to actually detune. <laughs> he like tunes, he would tune your engine to the point like he wants optimum performance. I'm yeah. like, man, back that yeah. down a little bit. Like, you know. <laughs> so I get I I I know fuel is important on our side. Yes. And um, but in the onward side, fuel having that perfect tune yes. and all that is even more important. So it is. you know, it fuel is. is a big thing there. So I'm glad it that is. you that's a big deal for me. It is. So like I said, for these guys to TQ and win, and then myself personally. That was a personal best that I've ever did. I made the semifinals and I finished that long main. So for me to do that, that was like a pat on my back because, I mean, I've only been doing on-road for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And to, to do a national event and make the semis and to finish the race. I mean, because like I said, on-road is a 100% is concentration. You blink, your car is wadded up and you're done, you know. Right. So to have our motor on tune, to be running my own fuel and to be running just absolutely perfect, I was it was a blessing. I, I enjoyed every minute of it. So. Yeah, and you did you run fifth scale as well? Uh, I tried fifth scale. I don't not with our own field, but I I, I have right. a fifth scale on road. It was it was I only ran the um, spec class, I think it was. So it, it's not as fast, wasn't as fun. But it was I mean, because once you do eight scale on road, it, there's just no adrenaline. There's nothing really? that compares to that, you know, at all. So it's like you're just over there with the turtle, like okay, let's go. You know, I love so. this skill. They look so real. I, that's they're, I like they're cool. They're cool. Yeah. They're super cool and fun to watch. You know, and the, the other class, like, because they got the Fisco Worlds coming up. So, mm -hmm. um, I can't remember what the other class is called, but like, you got guys like Chris Velez and Dave Blakely. He's in uh, Panda. These guys are or Kevin. These guys are all buying fit skills just to do the world. I saw so that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I really saw that. Cool. I'm gonna yeah. have to drop in on a lot of money to run worlds. Oh God, those cars a lot are of like money. seven grand. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. So. Yeah. pretty cool to see it is. uh so you, that is something i noticed you have switched from uh over to red's engines how'd that come about man uh you know what this is awesome they um for a while people have always said my feel only works better in red's engines you know and i was just like guys i've ran os all my life you know since oh what i want to say oh seven i've ran os engines you know, i was one of the few guys that would run those you know because they were a little pricey back in the day but you know i was able to run them and uh, I pretty much based my fill on OS, you know, even though I ran every motor out there except um, that the, the, the MX motor, I think it was, that was the only one I could get my hands on. But I pretty mm -hmm. much tested every motor or every engine, every fuel, and I just, you know, we put our notes together and the combination between my my OS and my uh, fuel was just, um, just awesome, you know. So um, uh, I finally, I, I was able to... Or, um, for our race coming up, um, oh, Marco, I'm sorry, Marco and Federica, I think they're brother and sister, I think. Yes. But uh, I was able to get a hold of them through Colin Herzig. And Colin was like, Chris, man, what do you think about the red situation and uh, sponsoring the race? I was like, what? This is awesome. And they've always done nothing but talk highly about our fuel, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, that, that's great. You know, just like for a company, an engine company, to talk highly about our com our, our product, and to want to be a part of it, that was just a blessing in the sky. It was just like, you know, why, you know, why not support this company? You know, so mm -hmm. it was a big, it was a big uh, hurdle for me to switch from OS to Reds because I was, you know, I've been so comfortable with my race program and I've never had issues with OSs. But to have a company support our company, mm -hmm. it was a no brainer, you know, and it was just like, you know, so. Uh, I switched to Reds right before our race. You know, I switched to Reds and um, Colin helped me out, got me going. Uh, Marco and, and and Federica, they you know obviously sponsored our A main race with tons of engines. You know, so that was that was awesome. But um, at my race, I was able to um, uh, I, I was able to get them broke in right before my race, 
-hmm. and, you know, Colin helped me out and everything. And, and by the time I qualifiers came around, my engines were screaming. So yeah. I was overly ecstatic for my switch. I, I love my Reds engines. They're running flawless. So I'm looking forward to DNC. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them in your on-road cars too. That's going to be, yeah. So that's going to be a, a, a different switch as well. So uh, yeah, I got rid of a couple of my last OSs and on-road. So I can't wait to get those in there as well and see how they perform. I'm really interested in seeing how they do. So Okay. All right. So we did touch on this uh, briefly. You do have top drivers like Kyle McBride. Um, and you have your your other top drivers in and onward. Are are we seeing? Are we going to see any more TNR top drivers or anybody that you wanted to give a special mention to that we probably didn't notice join TNR this year? Well, yeah, we got um, we we're, we're first off. I'm so happy with our team. I mean, we mm -hmm. got. I mean, I, I know people categorize people as in like Kyle, Ryan Cavalieri, Tyler Brown. These guys top drivers, but mm -hmm. and I I've specially handpicked almost all our drivers. Literally. Really. So each driver means something to the to our field, to me mm -hmm. personally, or you know, just in general. So yeah, we picked up um, you know, some fast guys out there. Um, but it's more we're we're with TNR, we're trying to like I'm an old school driver. So sponsorship actually means something Got you. with our facility, with our with our company. So we don't just have uh, uh, accounts like you have manufacturers out there that just hey, hey, I'm a beginner sportsman driver. Well, here's an account, you know, that's and then they call that sponsorship. That's horrible, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, most people don't know, but uh, our TNR, we have our own little TNR page. Our guys, that team is, is I'm going to say special, but it is because we have a contingency program. And it's not just for pros. It's for okay. It's for 40 plus and expert drivers because we don't really sponsor sportsman drivers. Right. So it's for expert 40 plus. And, um, and we have our own little thing going between the whole team and it's a ton of fun. You know, we're it's, that's good. It's, I didn't it's, know you had contingency. That's good. Oh, yeah, yeah. At JQ Racing. Yeah, it's fun. You know, keep mm -hmm. it going with the guys, you know. So that's why, again, we couldn't just pick up everybody because, again, we're it's a small group that we're trying to, you know, I know what you mean. Way. Create and a so, community. Yes, yes, exactly. So, and it's again, it's worldwide. So it's it's a ton of fun. But then we're all racing it. Like my buddy Eddie Lorette, you know, I snagged, you know, we have a contingency for 40 plus and I was able to snag a win from that cat. So, but he was fast all weekend, you know. He, so you paid he, yourself. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I took that money and wouldn't spend it. <laughs> so, um, but it's fun though. So anyway, yeah. Um, I still have like, uh, we, instead of going out and grabbing other pros, I, I, I um, made factory drivers within our team. So guys gotcha. like Walker Spinrad, Jermaine Robertson, these guys supported us from the start. They were regular team drivers. They're at that pro level, so they mm -hmm. deserve to jump up to be a factory driver. Got you. So, um, yeah, we pretty much try to keep it in house and work our way up from there. So, I'm, I'm really happy with our drivers. I love the team we have. We're all close, and um, yeah, just hopefully we can kill it, keep killing it. Do you guys have a, a squad going on to Puerto Rico, like a decent TNR team? Uh, not sure yet. <laughs> I'm not sure who's tried to travel yet. So, right. Um, not, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean yeah, it, it's still in the air with who's going. So I'd be, I mean, I'm, we're willing to help out whoever we can to get that, get out there, you know? So oh, good. Good stuff. I'm not sure. Good stuff. Um, all right. So let's talk about your race here. The Amy challenge yes. second year running it. Yeah. Uh, it was, it grew a lot this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of people went because it was the same. Unfortunately, it was the same weekend as as Nats warm up, but that's kind of unavoidable. Yeah. With Nats yeah. warm up coming, so f I mean, with nationals actually changing, everything have to had to be you know sped up their their schedule. But everybody went to this race. Uh, I was watching your Facebook lives before this. You had a ton of prize. I saw like fifteen yeah. OGO bands. Well, twelve because uh, we that's all different. know that. Um, I think you had twelve car mains uh -huh. because that's it. That's what I know because. How I know, because Thunder Alley, I remember asking Joseph when we was doing RCGP, why don't you put more people in the main? He's like, because Thunder Alley uh, can only hold 12 people. Exactly, exactly. I'm a racer, so I don't want to be squished to the side in right. my main event and not and be uncomfortable. So 12 people max, that's it. Yeah, I was like, this dude's got 12 OGO bags, like <laughs> all different colors. Like yeah. uh, my buddy's like, but these are all for raffles. I was like, no, but he doesn't do it for raffles. It's like... You have it. He raffles off each class. So, uh, you we had you on her last year to talk about this. You brought up some good points. I remember you saying this race is not for every race promoter. It's something we do to give back to my friends and my RC community. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you guys do different this year? 
Well, believe it or not, not absolutely nothing. <laughs> it grew. It just grew. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we gave away a, a few more things, you know, but changed up the raffle stuff. But uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I, I hear I've been getting so many good comments about and I love it to the heart, you know, about mm -hmm. this was the best race ever. Other race promoters need to, you know, look at this and blah, 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 blah. And so I want to reach out and say, yes, this race was one of a kind and mm -hmm. it should be. Uh, it is one of a kind race because not everyone's able to do what we're able to do. Correct. But uh, I don't do races for a living. So, right. and other people have to understand like other race promoters do this for a living. They're mm -hmm. not able to give of what, you know, the caliber of what we did. So uh, for us, fortunately, we're throwing our product out there. We're getting our name out there. So this huge event put teen our feels out there, you know, and that's mm -hmm. the purpose of this race. And yeah, we gave away a lot of stuff and you know, this race, we actually broke even. So that was, that, that was, was good. That's always that good. Was, yeah. It wasn't expecting that at all, you know? So, but you got to understand that guys, we broke even. So there's no way a race promoter is going to throw a race to either break even, make $10 or lose money. Exactly. So we can't down other race promoters at all ever for not giving back. And it, it sounds bad, but at the same time, yes, us RC racers, I'm a racer too. I love, like, if I'm having a horrible race and my A main just went to crap, but I could still win something in the A main raffle, that is mm -hmm. just unbelievable. I love that, you know. But mm -hmm. there are racers, there are race promoters that give back. Mm -hmm. We just don't, we just not, we're not always there to see it. And they're not at the magnitude of what I did. So, again, we can't down those guys. But again, we can look forward to the A main challenge. Exactly. We all know what's going to happen. And next year, it's we've already started talking about it. Next year, it's going to be even bigger. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's crazy. It, it, the way we're changing, you know, I've talked to Daniel already, MOD, Andrew at Thunder Alley. It looks like we're probably going to end up having it at Thunder Alley again next year. Next year maybe we're not sure. That, mm -hmm. But that's what we're gearing to. So, um, but yeah, we got to work out because uh, we went from 100, you know, we went from 280 entries to 462 entries. Yeah, it was so, like 225 people. It was quite a yeah, bit of people. That was that stuff. was that was uh you know nitro challenge status sort of. That's a know. lot of people at, at Thunder Alley. People don't it realize was. it. It was, but you know what though? It was like between Andrew and myself, we were able to space everyone out and it wasn't crowded. It just there was mm -hmm. a lot of people there and it wasn't crowded. I mean, we were able to manage it. It was it was great. Yeah, the track looked good. Uh, I really, uh, people were doubting the whoops going, I think it was going <laughs> into it. Yeah. I was like, we'll see how it goes. And then like, they weren't even an issue. I think they no. wore away. Uh, I really liked the graffiti that was done on the, my, my on the ramp. Miller, another RC car guy that's just, he's another fast RC driver that's just, right. that's one of his hobbies is, you know, you know, art. Because I call mm. that art. Other people call it graffiti, you know. No, it's art. The graffiti it, it, art. It just, and yeah. if you guys would have saw, like, like. I literally called him the day before. I was like, hey, bro, can you, I, I've been wanting to do this and blah, blah, blah. He goes, oh, I'll come out there tomorrow. Heck yeah, you know? And then he literally goes, what do you want? I go, here's a picture. He looked at it. Oh, okay, give me about four or five hours. I go, Maybe. what? You know? And next thing I know, he's just, and I'm like, really, dude? And he's like, yeah, I'm not going to take a lunch. I'm just going to get through it and get it done. I mean, the guy is just multi, I mean, unbelievable talented, man. So it's just, it was awesome. Yeah, I, I thought that was really cool. I, that ramp, I, I was like, what? Somebody didn't think of this all this time. I was right? like, that ramp's been there all that time since yeah. uh, RCGP, and nobody has really put any, they put banners on it or something yeah. like that. So that was a good idea. Right. Uh, I really like the track. Um, the I thought, well, I always like Thunder Alley tracks. It's, yeah. it's a unique track. You can only get... People, you, you have to understand the 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 amount of um, we're actually gonna put the truggy man up while we're talking. The amount of um, elevation that this track yeah. has is yeah. in, incredible. Like, yeah. and if you, it's not very. People think it's it looks big, but it's not that big of a track. But it's uh, it's it's just it's it goes from this high up to a a level like we're almost the same level as a, as a driver stand. Yes. So another, I just thought this was a great event. Um, see that. Like how could that's such great marketing? Like, like it, look, you see that big TNR sign yeah, there, like you know, like right? who, like I bet you, not every race now is gonna have somebody paint that. I bet you. Watch. I hope so, man. Yeah, I, they I should hope they copy that. I, I really uh, like our ideas. It's just again, it's to help the hobby grow. And like when people were there, like I was there from Tuesday on, you know, mm -hmm. you know, help you know getting the track ready. 
And people were just coming by like, this looks so cool. I like to see this. Can we bring our kids and can we, is it free to watch, you know? And I was like, heck yeah, yeah that's the purpose of this, you know? Sweet. So just to get it out there, you know? Right. All right. So we did have, no, I'm one of those guys who I don't like a lot of classes. You did have uh, quite a lot of classes at this. <laughs> yes. Uh uh, there's a two two gripes I have that you had a lot of classes, but I understand why you had it because this is how you give back to your friends. And we did have a lot of people complain about that little track cut up there, uh, right up her on the pool, which I saw a few times. But I think people also have to understand that this this is also uh, a really a fun race for people. This is a lot of giving back, and people were racing, man. People people were racing. People were talking about this track cutting right here. There's some people cut right here. Yes, yes. But um, t- tell us about the classes, why you had so many. I know you had like a over 53 classes. Who's over 53, man? <laughs> hey, that's actually one of the classes that we had an issue with cutting the track, you know? But Oh, we, yeah. The old yeah. guys, they can't see out that far, man. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm only joking. Uh, yeah. I'm only joking. Um, you know, there's money on the line too, so that's what made it a little tough. But um, yeah, I'm just watching. I don't know if you guys are watching this. Cavalier is a machine, isn't he? It's isn't the he? Same lap, the same line every lap. It's just uh, it's sick. Hey, you know what, dude? Just real quick, I have to do a little goat swinging right now because I call him the goat. I think that uh, Cavalier is has is fond it. He's gotten faster, and I think he's going to be a force to reckon with this year in in eight scale nitro. I said I feel it. the same way. I can I be by. I haven't seen this guy win as much as he switched to our field. Boom. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, kid, yeah. that guy, he's been, he's been, like I said, again, I can always go back in the day and name my five favorite guys to race. Mm-hmm. Paul Coleman, Ryan Cavalieri. Who was there? Oh, who was there? He, he podium. So Paul Coleman, Ryan Cavalieri, Adam Drake. Um, uh, you guys, oh God, I'm drawing it. Um, he was an old Megan driver. He doesn't run anymore. Oh, Bobby Tillman. Sorry. Uh, Bobby Tillman. Yeah, he was good. Uh, Bobby Tillman. And then, uh, of course, uh, Mayfield, just yeah. five of my favorite fun drivers to watch. So, but uh, but it seems Calvin Larry has picked it up a notch, man. This last year, I it, think so. Just, I think so. It's just amazing, man. So, All but right. anyway, um, that, the classes. So the classes, I know you yeah. wanted to address that. The, why so many classes? Yeah, you, you you got a lot of guys like I think JQ and. Adam and all these guys are in a disagreement with multi champ, you know, classes. Mm-hmm. As someone like myself, okay, I call myself a 40 plus glory driver, okay, because that's my my level has gone here and it's peaked to 40 plus, and that's it, okay. Right. So I will never, ever, ever in this lifetime be as fast as my top five drivers that I just named off. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I will never have a chance to podium or do anything like that if I continue to race or race in the pro or racing races where I'm not separated from those classes. Mm -hmm. So I'm a racer and I'm super competitive. I don't want to race for a C main or a B main. That's just my personal opinion. So at my race, yes, I separated the classes. I had rookie class, which is for, I had, I had, I had a parent drive all the way from Arizona just to have their kid race, Mm -hmm. not the parents. They didn't race at all. Their kid race just to run rookie. That right there was worth it all right there. But then to see, you know, um, Hunter and, 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 Mal- and uh, Malcolm Townsend, uh, um, Mikey Snyder, all these, uh, my, my nephew, Dominic, to see these little guys battling with each, with each other. And, yes, yeah, some of the little guys are faster than the others. Mm-hmm. But, again, we can't justify and say, hey, these guys are way faster than they need to be out of the class when it's not fair because their parents are spending more time with their kids. And getting them to a level of, hey, this is where you're going to, you know, uh, you want to be to this level of sportsman or whatever, whatever. But right now, this is the rookie class. You deserve to be there. So that was a fun class and always is. And then, of course, we have our normal sportsmen, you know, e-buggies, uh, all, you know, all the classes of sportsmen, all the classes of 40 plus. And then with our class, I call it open. I mean, uh, the open class, I call it expert because, yeah, it's open. But in reality, these right, are Right. I get what you mean. They're, they're not, it's not an open class. It's an expert class. Like mm-hmm. um, uh, Matthew Willoughby, Mike Will, uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, Wally uh, and all those guys. Wally, yeah, all these guys. These guys are not open drivers. These are expert drivers. They're right. fast as hell, but we're just right under that pro class. And right, I, I agree with you there. That's a perfect class for them, you know? So, I agree with you there. And then now the 52 plus class, all right? I've had, I, I that class brought out drivers um, if you guys don't remember, but uh, Jason Bailey and Cecilia, they were the first husband and wife couple, race couple. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, I don't know if you remember back back in the day, Joey, uh, Joey used to have a series called the Saturday series. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was actually my first race I ever did. My first base race, big race I ever did. I made the G main. That's how many racers would come mm -hmm. to that series. I made the G main and didn't bump up. <laughs> <laughs> the G-Man. Wow, well, I don't think you're ever see a G-Man again. But dude, that, that's how big the Saturday series was back in the day. Oh, I can imagine. Huge. Yeah. So, um, but uh, Cecilia and Jason Bailey, they were so fast. I believe he won that series that year, or she did. But it was the coolest thing because I didn't know, you know, being dumb, I didn't know how many chicks raced. You know, I know Rhonda was out there, but I didn't mm -hmm. know this chick was that fast as she was. She was pitting her husband, and then all of a sudden, they were back to back racing. And then she grabs his radio and goes up there and she wins the next class. Really? So that was just like, it, just unbelievable. So they were the fastest couple. But anyway, I haven't seen them race since like 06, 05. Oh, that's nice to see. Then they came yeah, back so on. to see them come out and I mean, I'm not, I don't mean to age CC, but she's, you know, she hit the 52 plus class, you know? Right. And she was out there having a blast. Dean Rock's dad was out there. Um, uh, quite a bit of guys out there. So for us to have two full heats, of 52 plus. Oh, really? I didn't realize Two that. Full heats. And for those racers, you don't see them racing. Maybe you'll see Jimmy Wright racing, Paul Coleman uh, here and there, but all those other drivers, you don't see them at all. So what our race did was bring those guys out and have a blast and have fun, see their you know sons watch their dad's race that haven't raced in years. That's what it's about. You know what yeah. I mean? So. I I wanted to bring up something. I, I, I know I'm one of the guys who say I don't like big entry races. I'm, I'm not saying I don't like them. I, I, they have their place in RC. I just wanted to say my, my issue if is people making races just to, to making classes just to, to get more entries for money. Right. Uh, so I, I, I get it. People have to make money too. Yeah, my issue yeah. with this is you're, you're still like you broke even with this. This isn't a race about making money. This is a race about giving back to your friends. If you want to have a 50, 252 plus class and you got two full heats of it then there then you had justification for doing that if yeah, you have a rookie class you. i'm fine with that it's it's my issue has always been like people who make access classes just to make up numbers that's i i know why why you did this race i'm glad you broke even because you should <laughs> break even like you know what i mean yeah yeah so my issue isn't really with that if you had two full heats of 50 Plus 52, that's great because they, they deserve to race as well. Exactly. And have fun. See, because yes. I'm not too my hoot, but again, I'm a 40 plus glory guy. But there's some 40 plus drivers out there. Um, I say Jeremy Courts, he doesn't run anymore, but he did our stuff. Thank you, Jeremy Courts. But, yeah. uh, you know, myself, um, Eddie Lorette, um, um, uh, Rhonda, these these are these cats are fast. I mean, and I'm not saying we blow the waters off the 52 plus guys because Jimmy Wright, Paul Coleman, these guys are right equal with us but they're just old cats you know but right uh but for for them to be separated was cool and the 40 plus guys for us to be separated is fun too so i felt the class and then again another and then see the like the 52 plus guys they weren't included in the raffles for the okay. they the 52 plus they won their own money so right the first plus won 500 second place third place etc the rookie class they weren't included in the raffle as well they my wife made them of course, you know, a, a woman puts their touch on it. They, they had their own black bags with their sticker. And and nice. uh, the boys from Racecraft sponsored us with the mini modules and the fuel and everything. So that was super cool. So the, the juniors had their own thing. And then this year, of course, we added the electric class. Yes, right. We don't say the E word in our house. But we added the electric class for uh, contingency prizes, too. And it ended up being the, the, the E class was I think we had more E stuff than Nitro, you know. So oh, E buggy so big, man. It's, well, E truggy, E buggy. We, I can't yes, get over E truggy's growing. Yeah, dude. So, um, you know that was that was fun to see, you know. And my boy, you know, Lee General, he's he's one of the E kings, you know. And he's I like, know. Well, you got to get us, you got to get us in those, you know, in those price, you know, price pools too. I was like, you know what, you're right, dude. So this year we, uh, we, you know, we got him in there, and even though they didn't win. But we still they had a chance to win, so that was fun. Oh, so so let's yeah, let's talk about that. Um, you had a lot of prizes. So how it uh, you had cash cash prizes, you had the OGO bags. I think even I think one uh, group of racers got all Reds engines as well. All Reds, oh, so sweet, yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, explain uh, that to three, the to the people. Uh huh. Explain that to the people how that. Okay, worked. so yeah, so what we did, so the A main challenge is the whole goal is to make the A main now. People always say when there's money involved in this, 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 people drive dirty and this, this, and this. But the thing about it is you have no idea if you're going to win or not because it's a raffle again. 
-hmm. you know? So it's like, if you make the A main a ride, now you have a chance to win something, whether you finish the race or not. So okay. we had guys that made the A main that left because, you know, obviously they didn't podium, but they ended up winning an OGO bag or a motor, you know? So <laughs> it, was it was super cool. So the three main prizes that we give away is we give cash, which next mm -hmm. year is going to be just a little bit higher. That's super cool. But this year we gave away 3000 to the winner, sec uh, first place, second place got 2000 third place got 1000 and then from fourth to 12th, they got $100. Okay. So that was one raffle. And then the other one was everyone got OGO bags. From first to 12, got to pick whatever one you wanted, you know. And then the other uh, prize pool was the Reds Engine combos. So okay. everyone won, you know, a, a, a Reds Engine combo. So that was super cool. Which Reds Engine did you guys give away? Uh, the Secuter, the Secu God, I can't ever say. The Scuderias. Scuderias, yes. Yeah. Oh, and, wow. You get really expensive. exactly ones. what I'm running in mind. So uh, even though I have the limited edition ones for my pictures, because somehow that company knew my color scheme and they made a head special for me. No, I'm just there you go. But anyways, but yes, the motor ride, this is the engine I run. And yeah, those motors scream. I love them. Uh, I saw you gave away some pit bikes. Uh, I think you had some uh, other giveaways like raffles and other things. What else did you have on giveaway? I, I swear you had a pit bike. We did. So uh, my from or from TNR Fields and my family for us saying thank you for signing up for our race. Mm -hmm. Whoever signs up. So I mean, literally everybody that signs up for our race has a chance to win something. Everybody. Okay. So everyone that signed up for our race had a, their name went into our raffle to enter that uh, to win that pit bike, and that was a big one ten dirt bike. It wasn't just a little little pee wee bike. This one was a okay. nice size one. So um, so everyone that entered the race had a chance to win that. And then obviously our raffle was just ridiculous. I mean, from air you had a whole HB. Uh, oh yeah, so we had full blown built HB e truggy, truggy, and then the e buggy. We didn't get in time from Hot Bodies, but it wasn't built. But it, full kits. But these other ones were fully like the the truggy nitro truggy came with the Drake motor in there, right? You know, uh, Sended RC servos in there, fully done. Um, the e truggy came with Tekken, uh, hard you know Tekken motor and ESC. Fully built, done, and all those builds were by uh, Wally built, so that was super really? cool. So nice. yeah, awesome combos. And then again, we gave away air compressor, we gave away a generator. Um, yeah, I, I, mean, I forgot about that generators. Yeah. Oh wow, generator. you I mean, got all out, dude. All yeah, out. just RC stuff, stuff that we can use, you know. So it was fun. It was again, it was just you know what. Before it even got to the raffles, though, people were just coming up saying, "Bro, this format is fun. Thank you. I couldn't make it on Friday, but I I, I still got to come and enjoy the race." A full racing day of Saturday and mains on Sunday, blah blah blah. So just before the raffles even happened, everyone was stoked about it. So that was cool. awesome, awesome. That's good, man. Uh, yeah. Great to give back. Uh, yeah. I'm glad also that you didn't you broke even because I know the yeah. last race you told yeah. me and I was like, whoa, like yeah, yeah, we spent a uh, bit. <laughs> uh, so that's always good. And like you said, it's it's giving back to your friends, your customers. This isn't the format or this isn't the uh, the race that other promoters should do because they have to make money as well. We understand that. So and just so people get that. And let me tell you too. So I wasn't the first one to do this. So okay. uh, just from the people that I know, the promoters that I know, um, I've seen Dave Lycom out there at Psycho Nitro Blast. I swear they had a nice size raffle before. Um, my idea for my big raffles came from mm -hmm. Dave and Mona at Coyote Hobbies. They're mm -hmm. guys that don't do electric. They would have the most awesomest raffles ever. And that's where I got my idea from. Gotcha. And then giving the money away, I got that from Jimmy Babcock because Jimmy at our Jimmy Babcock series, he gives mm -hmm. away money back to all the racers. So I just put these things together and put my own twist on it. And here we go. So, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Next yeah. year, same dates? Uh, we're looking at the exact same dates again. Um, I mean, I, and I know Tim Lyman then might be doing something, which is actually I, 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 the fact that he had a race on the same date as ours was actually fine because it gave people an option because not everyone cares to do a race. Like you're saying a big race, uh, more of the pro guys would rather just go do their thing. You know, uh, this race know, wasn't about pro guys race. anyway, huh? Your race isn't about pro guys anyway. It, it's it, about it giving about, back. See, okay. How about this though? See the pro I see again, don't get me wrong. I call, I call, you know, Tebow and, and Mayfield and all right. these guys, they're aliens dude. Cause what they do is just un, un, unearthly. It's just amazing. <laughs> But I don't, but I don't, I mean, you got to look at the pros that were at our race, okay? Right. Dylan Nelson, Carlos Rodondo, um, uh, Walker Spinrad, Tyler Brown. I, I'm sorry. I know Those you guys are all fast guys. 
dude, these guys are unbelievable fast. That you know fast what I mean? Tyler Finster, uh, these Jermaine, these guys are um, these guys are a main guys that could make any a main at any big race, and yet they chose to come to our race, and that made me feel awesome. So what people don't know is the pro. You know, I, I feel like I don't even know if you ever seen the movie Rat Race. I'm I, I, I'm a gambler. I'm not a gambler, but I love mm-hmm. gambling. I love betting. So I said the pro that had the best combined finishes, they won $500. Okay. We didn't advertise it though. Cause I didn't want people, I wanted the pros that were going to support us to support um, us. And then they got a, their own little thing too. Gotcha. So Cavalier did quite well that race. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. He did. He, yeah. He, so did. he did quite well. But anyway, congratulations, man. I'm glad you did that. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the coverage. Uh, shout out to Maude once again. Yes. Maude and, 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 and Rudy Rico, those guys killed it all weekend. Sweet. And to hear people saying like our race was the best coverage they've ever seen from this little Matt guy, you know, dude, I mean, his production is just amazing. I mean, yeah, he's a one man show. He, I mean, but he makes it work and he does it. And I'm, yeah. I'm learning from this cat, you know what I mean? He's a kid, you know, and he's just, you don't put nothing past people. He works hard. Don't. He works very he works, hard. That's the thing. He earns every mini, but you know what? And I got to say this one more time. Okay. I got to say this and I got to make sure people hear this. Okay. The reason why we were able to give away so much is because these people weren't greedy and mm-hmm. and, and 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 trying to kill us for right. Um, I've got had you. like starting with our announcer. I've had I've asked other announcers and they're like, "Oh, I need twenty percent at the door of every entry." And I'm mm-hmm. like, "Well, bro, I'm trying to give back to racers. Can we, you know, blah blah blah?" Daniel Adams. Not only is he my good friend, mm-hmm. and not only did Daniel Adams announce the very first race I ever tried in my life, which was a ten scale nitro truck. Um, but for him to get run through a program and to help us out and say, Hey, Chris, I'll take care of you, man. Uh, I'll do it for this amount. And that's just have fun. Mm-hmm. And and then for him to see, to do it for the exact same amount again, that's how I'm able to give back to racers. Gotcha. Andrew Trotter uh, at Thunder Alley said, Hey, well, I'll work with you. Let's do this. And let's do this. MOD. Now to have a full cover, uh, I'll have a full camera crew out there is not cheap at all mm-hmm. for him. To, to give us the pricing he did, not saying that's going to happen with everyone. And, and and I'm not throwing numbers or anything out there like that, but they understood the format of our race of giving back to the racers. So they helped me out. So that's gotcha. what I was able to help them out. So without the support, and then of course, Daniel, the track builder completely killed it and helped us out pricing as well. All this comes together to help the A main challenge work. So gotcha. I, I just wanted to say thank you to all those guys. Sweet. Awesome. You guys did a good job. Good job. Thank you, man. Thank Congratulations. You. I like Andrew too. Nice guy. Yeah. Spent a lot of time there with RCGP. Yeah. Nice dude. All right, dude. So I know I've kind of known about this for a while, okay. uh, but you have some big news that you want to announce. When you told me this a couple of months ago, and I'm just been kind of, you know, when we talk, I ask you about it. But um, yeah, man, can we finally talk about this TNR facility that you told me about a few months oh, ago? Yes. Oh, my so God. Let's talk so- about this. Uh, this is something that I guess nobody really talks about or does, you know, and mainly, and now I understand it's because of money. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's money. But we decided to, um, our field did way better than my wife and I could have ever imagined. You know, people told us in the beginning, you're not going to make money with it. There's no money in RC. There's no money in racing. I was hard headed and did my own thing anyway. And look where we're at. So we decided to save that money and run right now while we're hot, while we're, you know, we're, you know, fuel is selling off the shelves. And we decided to put a little money away and try to build our own complex. Mm-hmm. So we're looking actually, you know, and if, it, I mean, we've been in the process for quite a while trying to get this going. So it doesn't look like anything's going to happen in the year of 2023 or 2022, but it does look like we are going to be building a 20 acre RC compound which will house seven tracks, which wow. is going to be amazing. Yes. It's 20 so, acres. So what are we talking acres. about here? What what type of tracks? So we're looking at an eight scale, uh, premier eight scale on road or off road track, like what we run on mm-hmm. and an eight scale on road track and then a fifth scale uh, track. On-road now track. all tracks are covered. So we're, our purpose is to hold, to host a world's a national event, rain or shine. Okay. So, so that's the whole purpose of the way we're building our facility. And we're engineering this. I mean, from the driver stand to the on to the uh, to the ramps to get into the pit lane, everything is engineered to the T. And it's right. just going to be a facility that it's going to be something that you're going to want to. Um, what do you do? Check in, you know, come mm-hmm. in, you know. So uh, it's going to be awesome. So 
uh, we're going to have, uh, uh, we're going to also have a two story building where it's going to be uh, downstairs will be paved 10 scale uh, on road. Mm. And then upstairs, yes. And then upstairs, we're going to have uh, carpet, um, off road carpet. Really? Yes. So, and then we also have enough room to throw a three acre pond for RC boats. Okay. So you that have- is the most fun. Any yeah. flying fields, anything like that as um, well? Well, uh, we so again, we're trying to we're trying to work on our property right now to uh-huh. you know for um, our our land, but we're also trying to acquire the land behind it as well for the airfield because it's really? so funny with the airfield you pay for space or something like that. It's weird, I don't know, but so anyway, so we had to acquire the land behind to do that, but that's a later date. We want to get our 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 land and our construction loan approved so we can go ahead and get going. So. Um, yeah, that's the goal. What size uh, eight scale race are we track? Are we looking at? Are we looking at like just with a, a, a roof and open sides, or how's that? Oh yeah, out? yeah, roof and open sides with the option mm-hmm. like we'll have roll downs because our mm-hmm. sun, the way our tracks are designed, our the sun will hit drivers, so mm-hmm. we'll have. Uh, you know, I do custom automation. You know, with audio video, so okay. I'll be doing the most of the majority of all the audio, video, security, etc. But um, I'll do automated shades. For the blinds oh, wow. that automatically cut down at certain times of the day so we're never blinded you know so that's awesome everything that's so yeah cool. everything we everything for rc that i wouldn't i want we thought mm-hmm. about and it's it's going to be phenomenal so um that's badass it is yes yeah, so we're it's, we're excited my wife and i it's the most stressful thing we've ever tried to do we've mm-hmm. we've had our ups and downs we've already had deals you know close as or fall out escrow get into escrow you know money no money so it's just it's been an up and down thing but it's we're still going at it we're still trying to hit it hard yeah I, the only other facility that i've been to like that is in chile uh they have it just mm-hmm. outside of santiago uh it's it's very big it has f- flying fields it has a, sm- a pond for boats it has an on-road track off-road track nice <clears throat> it has a go-kart track too by the oh, way sick, sick. but nice. they also have uh fruit trees around it that they use for to, yeah that's part of the the income as well and they oh. have a a clubhouse where you can uh, this is a really nice facility like all the pits are they're covered with electricity compressors yeah. then they have a clubhouse yeah. like hall of fame stuff from chile you know rc in chile so this is great man um having it covered too like yeah wow. everything covered yeah like we yeah. don't have to worry about rain never you know never. don't yeah. don't have to worry about being inside a building we got open at, yeah you know, it's it, it, we thought it's well thought out so and again same with us we have we do have a again why we why we're keeping our tnr fills um drivers you know limited because they will have limited access to got you uh their access to you know their lounge area for the racers to talk etc cetera, etc cetera. it'll be super fun for that and then our whole the whole theme is race only it's not even though i'm a sports guy i play football baseball that's why all my life mm-hmm. hockey <laughs> but um this facility will be a race facility only so okay. you will see, you know, Delahart Jr. posters or, you know, um, uh, Ronald Falk posters or, you know, it's going to be, you know, RC race theme. race theme all around the whole facility the minute you walk in. So okay. it's going to be really fun. So we're expecting this uh, 2023 then? Yes. Uh, between 20, between, I mean, we're hoping to hopefully break ground 2022 and then be completed by 2023 because of the, the size of this place. You know, okay. we actually, believe it or not, I just came from a meeting yesterday with the city and our architects. So uh, getting things rolling with that is our, the city is extremely happy for us with what we're doing because it's okay. um, it's bringing it's going to be bringing in, of course, tax dollars. But we're going to be right on the freeway. So we're bringing in people, you know, oh, good. The, yeah, we have the Vegas traffic. So everyone that's stuck in Vegas traffic, they're going to want to pull off. They're going to see cars flying in the air. They're going to want to come in, you know, check yeah. out the hobby shop, see what's some going exposure. On. Yes, yes. So yes, much it, it, it's bringing you know just to build the sport again, you know. So yeah, I I, so. I I wish you guys all the luck. I want to see when you guys break ground. Yes, this is exciting yes, news. Is. I'm I'm happy for you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, covered on road track, like oh, that's yeah. Cool. Don't get any better. That tacky. That ugh, I cannot yeah. wait. You know, the traction will just be consistent. Don't have to worry about sun weather. You know, it's going to be fully fully done right. You know, so awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'm happy for you, man. I'm happy you. that your business is doing well. I, yeah. I appreciate your support of the podcast. Always. I look forward to seeing you guys. I have a question. So Paul Comey, we got him out to do some racing. What did he drive? Did he drive a Kyosho? 
I, yeah, he's still running his Kyosho stuff, yeah. and and yeah, and he's I can't the brother's still fat. He doesn't do Ball a lot of good at all. Yeah, and he, fast guys don't lose it. You know what I mean? They just still have it. You know, so I think he, him, and Jimmy were going at it quite well. I think Paul, Paul and Jimmy would have had a good run. You know, I'm, I'm not sure what happened. You know, you know, with the track cutting there. You know, but it was close, and and, and it was fun to watch those guys run. So it's good to see him running again. Um, it is, and, and it was cool because. Uh, Paul, you know, he actually put it in my trailer and big thanks to Paul Coleman racing. Uh, he actually was the one that prepped my cars before my main events. So they didn't fall apart. They were perfect. So I uh, can't he loves that stuff. Oh, dude, just to have help. And then my buddy, Kai McNeil, he's another kid that's just another phenomenal pro driver that just comes out of nowhere and throws down laps. It's just like, you know, but with, I mean, my event, I have to give my buddy Kai um, props. My event would not have happened as well as it did if I didn't have a right hand man and he was right there by my side from you know from Thursday on you know so it was just he yeah. helped me you know uh have that event perfect you know so awesome man yeah well I'm happy for you it's good to see success stories in our industry uh you and your wife are doing good things as they say teamwork makes dream work <laughs> and um yeah I I look forward to seeing you guys it's been a while it's been two years Yes. coming up here so i'll be excited to get back and hang out with you guys in the tnr pits nice. um and woo the facility i'm super excited about that I'm super yeah excited we are that. i am too just to have my own place to go practice i mean a lot of us cats in the high desert have nowhere to run anymore you know we got coyote hobbies thank god right but no eight skill places to run anymore so cows you know there's no more socal raceway so mm-hmm. uh yeah to have a facility up here and to to be a multi-facility yes that's what's going to be super cool because yes. you got a lot of guys that are off-road guys that don't know anything mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. on-road and then on-road guys that just want to try jump one time you know yep. so to have all that in the same you know facility it's going to be the coolest thing ever so yes yes lots of crossover you know, and yeah. about guys i'm about guy oh god i can't wait I- to see it, I mean, most guys don't know about, but it's so cool. A lot of RC guys have boats in their yep. shelves and they have nowhere yep. to run them. And then the purpose of our pond is we could do nitro boats in our pond because it's not a, you know, fishing game pond. It's just right. a boat okay. pond just for that. So, because in the Philippines and all these other places, countries, nitro boating is huge, you know, mm-hmm. but it's not so big out here in, in the States. So, right. but like to see a 12 cell huge boat go that's why the, our, our pond is about three acres yeah that's to be you, big you need room for those things to open up you know but then also mm-hmm. we got a little part a portion of the pond that'll be for the sailboat guys so it's, yeah. it's it's from little to big so yeah i would also get them trail guys up there nice crawling oh, areas oh, all that yeah. type of stuff we see i haven't see i'm leaving stuff out and i'm uh-huh. leaving for for a surprise for people but we have a two-story rock crawling that'll travel around the whole hobby shop, which is the no coolest way. thing in the world. Yeah. Wow. The way it's designed is the coolest thing. So it'll, it'll have waterfall, trees. I mean, going around the whole hobby oh, shop. Dude, so, I can't wait till this is done. Yeah, I can't wait to come I, I, Like every day, like engineering notes go in on how to how to make this place better, better, better. So it's, it's, gonna, it's a work in progress, but it'll be fun. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate your enthusiasm and your passion. It's it's a it's a great injection in the in the industry that we need. Uh, thank you for all that you do. Uh, I hope to make to make it to the Amen Challenge next year. I really hope you get this facility done. I'm super excited about that. Thank you. Glad to see your business is doing well. Uh, people are supporting you. Thank you for your support of the podcast. Uh, Nitro truly is the glory, and it's it's <laughs> it's proven that. Uh, do you want to say any thanks before we we head out here and um, th- give anybody any information? Uh, yeah. Uh, always again, I want to thank my wife for being by my side, letting me play with my toys and have fun with everything. I want to thank all the TNR supporters supporters out there, not just the art, the drivers, the sponsor drivers, but all the supporters out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, my buddy, all the guys that helped me out, Tyrone, Angie, um, uh, all the guys uh, in the South, the East, Ryan, uh, mm-hmm. for helping me distribute and, and to get our feel out there. Without those guys, we wouldn't be where we're at right now. Mm-hmm. Um, our local shops, Garen at Rev, uh, Dave Mamona at Coyote, Jimmy Baca, who just did another huge order, literally, that we're going out to go deliver. Um, um, uh, Andrew at Thunder Alley, all the tracks that support our field and to keep our product out there. Again, guys, we're all about the tracks and the, and the hobby shops. You get them in the hobby shops and tracks, that keeps those guys open. So take note, manufacturers, you know. Gotcha. So, but thanks to all you guys again. And uh, thanks for everyone that came out to the A-Main Challenge. I uh, appreciate your support. I'm so glad everyone had a good time. Cool, man. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you and the family at DNC. 
Yes. And um, let's have some fun. It's going to be some serious racing going on. Some serious racing. Sure. I'm trying to win that AMA money, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. I'll talk to you later on, man. Have a good one. All right. Appreciate you, brother. Take All care. Right. Bye-bye. All right. All righty, Max. That brings the end to our podcast. Uh, thank you for your time, good buddy. Thank you to Chris Nelson and uh, his time. So really big news there has got about his new facility that is opening up. That's going to be awesome. You know, I'm glad to see things like that. Uh, we we be looking out for more of that as as it gets closer to doing that. Um, Max, you thank you for your time. You know, I like this new hoodie look. You're not looking as homeless as usual, so I like that. <laughs> Still got to trim this mustache. Still got to trim this mustache. Um, it ain't going, man. It ain't going. It's staying. Soon it's going to start curling out like this. You're going to be like, oh, I need mustache wax. Yeah, maybe I need to do that. That sort of be my new brand, the mustache, man. Okay. No? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all good, man. All good. Do what you want to do. It's your life. It's your it's your facial hair. You do what you want with it. Um, yeah, man. I noticed you didn't say anything about my awesome arrangement of Black Series uh, toys here. So this is a tribute to probably, I forgot to say this in intro, intro, that was probably one of the best episodes. And as a longtime Star Wars fan, I was enthralled and absolutely uh, gobsmacked by what I saw yesterday, which is all these characters together and one, one like movie. We got to see Cad Bane, who's badass Monty Hunter, badass Luke. Like this is when he was like space Jesus, Luke, uh, Mandalorian, Grogu and Ahsoka all in one thing. Like as a Star Wars nerd, I'm super happy. All my RC Star Wars friends have been messaging me. They're all geeking out. Uh, I know Hagbar can't see it yet because it's at the snowbirds too bad for him he's got a race he can't you know enjoy the joy but uh, i'm super happy and super pumped about star wars max thank you for your time thank you everybody for your time um we can't do this without these guys uh the no name uh rc podcast listeners you know all the the guys from around the world and an rc squad uh you make this all possible thank you for your support thank you to the patrons for the extra support as well we can't do it without you guys. Uh, we need to do a Patreon pod here soon. Maybe we'll do one next week, Max. Just record for those guys. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, thank you, everybody that continues to support us. We greatly appreciate it, man. Uh, if you wish to be a patron, you can in the in the written description of this podcast. We can't do this without the awesome companies that support us as well. Invisible Speed, TNR Fuels, High Tech RC, Beach RC, Techno RC, Mayako, Lugs Racing Tires, TZO. Clinic RC, Racecraft USA, G Spec, RC Tuning, JTP RC, Papa Billy Traction Tonic, shout out to RCGP, House of RC, JQSM, Run of Falk, RC Kevin, Hagbar, good luck to him at the Snowbirds, good luck to everybody racing at uh, Paris tonight. And you'll be listening to this for me tonight. It'll be fun to see. We got to talk about that. We're going to talk about that's probably going to be one of the, the most talked about club races ever next week snowbirds is hardly a club race no no oh, i'm no, talking they, about oh, the paris oh, race sorry i was confusing because it was just a snowbird yeah so, my buddy chuck yeah, I'm getting from Va- <laughs> my buddy chuck from vancouver is gonna come and help me go over the snowbird snowbird race but anyway cool. show the sponsor some love everybody we got coupon codes we got affiliate links it helps us out sharing them some love shows us some love and um yeah max you got anything to say to the the people before we leave Keep RC fun, man. It's yeah, like, keep it fun. It's it's great. And like the friend the guy who is pissing off you on the internet, he's probably just having a bad day. So try to be friends. <laughs> try not to be as dick as the other guy that's probably being a dick to you. So we'll all have more fun then. People aren't in I the agree. world to hate each other. People are in the world to have fun. Sweet. With that said, I hope you guys are liking the new format here. Uh, if you can leave a notif- leave a like, leave a sub, hit that notification button, leave reviews, share. We appreciate it. Help us get out there in the algorithms. Help us go viral. That helps us out a lot. Remember, everybody, nitrous is the glory. E-buggy pays the bills. If you ain't grinding, you're sliding. Everybody have a good weekend of racing. Be safe. Travel safe. And um, have fun. With that said, Lefty and Max are out. Short intro.